California, a near capacity crowd is expected on hand. Two of the top teams in the WAC, it's Hawaii, the Warriors visiting the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Hi, everybody, and good evening. Welcome to College Football Friday night on ESPN2. I'm Steve Levy. The good news and the bad news for Fresno State. The good news is it was a short week coming off Pat Hill's worst loss as head coach here, giving up 67 points a week ago at Boise State. Now, the bad news is the short week, Rod Gilmore, less time to prepare for Hawaii. Hawaii's wild offense. Yeah, a short week, and I don't know if it's a good thing for Fresno State, but it's a good thing for us and for fans. It's going to be wild. The ball will be in the air. We're talking about an offense that last week threw 58 pass plays, called 58 pass plays in a row. They don't have a running back with more than 30 carries so far, seven games into the season. And if you're Fresno State, how do you combat that? Maybe keeping the ball away. You've got a quarterback in Paul Pinninger who can throw it, but the running game is something Fresno State will need tonight and some big plays out of Paul Pinninger. Hawaii has won the toss. We'll wait a little while to see Pinnaker because the Warriors will receive. Back deep for Hawaii is John West. And Asin Asparuha will put it in the air. Really a pivotal game for the hometown team, Fresno State, in terms of bowl consideration. And we will get into that as the evening progresses. Crowd settling in. We hope you are too. College football Friday night from Fresno, California is underway. John West from the goal line. He'll try the right side. And he'll be pumped out at about the 24-yard line. A kick return of 23. Randall Fields on the special team stop. Timmy Chang is the quarterback for Hawaii last week. Only the second time in his career he did not throw an interception. He threw four touchdown passes a week ago. And the backs and receivers. What do they even need a running back in there for? There's <laughs> Michael Bass. He'll start at running back. He's missed the last three games coming up. You'll see in four wide receiver sets for the majority of the evening. On first down and 10 at the 23 yard line. And they'll operate out of the shotgun the majority of the time as well. Here's Chang with drop back and looking left. And he will drop it off. Oh, and a heavy hit right away. Farrell Mitchell was flat out rocked by Bryce McGill. Welcome to Bulldog Stadium. And that's something that was missing last week against Boise State. This is the bull, kind of Bulldog football. Listen to this one, Steve. <laughs> oh, you said short week? <laughs> short week. Short tempers. Everybody raring to get going for Fresno State. Hey, Pat Hill admitted, I got soft. I mean, that's a direct quote from one of a, tough, a real tough guy head coach. He said, I got soft. He took a lot of the blame for last week's shellacking at Boise State. Here's Chang on second down and eight. Under pressure and scrambling, throwing on the run and completing for the first down, Jeremiah Cochran. <laughs> It made it look easy. Chang found a seam. There was some pressure by Nick Burley, but not enough. The offensive line for Hawaii, Vince Manoai, is the outstanding player. June Jones says the best offensive lineman he's ever been around. That's college or professional. And there for Fresno State, the guys up front, Nick Burley, playing with an injured thumb still. Heather will have more on that later in the show. First down toss looked rather easy, Rob. Too easy. A lot of time. What's this? Could it be a run play? Michael Bass gains one yard on the run. An actual running play called by the Warriors. And the <laughs> linebackers in secondary, they must be shocked. They could not have been prepared for this. Sam Williams returned last week to the lineup. He's arguably the best linebacker. It's a standout core for Fresno State. And the four players in the defensive backfield who figure to be worn out tonight. Fresno State, in fact, will use Tyrone Culver, who's a free safety, as a corner. They're going to try to rotate six corners or so against the four wide receiver set of Hawaii. Rod, what is going on here? Two running plays in a row. It's Bass again. Burley brought him down. You mentioned last week 58 straight passing plays. Hawaii did not run a running play until 3.55 left in the third quarter. So June Jones is on the sideline and he goes passing. Ah, that's just what they're expecting us to do. The essence of surprise. <laughs> third down and 11. Wow, we've got shock value already. Three receivers to the left. 
for Chang. Mitchell is the single setback. He's an excellent blocker, and he'll stay in to do just that. Chang steps and fires, and was thrown into double coverage. Justin Colbert was in the neighborhood, and Hawaii will punt. But one thing you can see right off the bat is that Hawaii has a great offensive line. Timmy Chang has an awful lot of time, and that line features three players who very well could wind up in the NFL. Fourth down and 11. Matt McBriar will come on to punt at the 30. Adam Jennings, very dangerous, is back at the 10 yard line. You see the numbers on McBriar. And it's a high, and I do mean a high kick. Jennings will run up and let the ball bounce and get out of there. And it will be down at the 17 yard line. And Fresno State will take over their first crack with the football. Paul Pinnegar is the starting quarterback. Had a career game last week, sort of. He threw for a career high, 371 yards, three touchdowns. But, of course, nobody remembers that. They were flat out lit up at Boise State. And the backs and receivers, Rodney Davis and Marquette Davis, the brothers, they are the offensive stars for Fresno State. Interesting setup here. Number 50, D'Artagnan Shaq is in the backfield. The right guard lines up in the backfield. And maybe that's part of the reason we have flags on the field. A little bit of the old uh, refrigerator Perry line up there. The old bear is getting the big guy in the backfield. There the fridge. There's the Shaq, except that's actually his last name. D'Artagna Shaq. That's okay. Shaq will work. The red shirt freshman. Riverside, California. Shack will work. You know, you got a refrigerator, you get a shack. You can huh? keep a refrigerator but in your shack. Can you actually have a nickname that is actually your last name? If it works, yeah. Shack, yeah. Shack. If it works, you can do it. Don't you usually add a letter like Shacky or something? <laughs> like the Shaw. Shack dog. First down to 15 after the penalty marker to put it on the ground. Rodney Davis out to the 25 and brought down at the 27. Abe Illuminian makes the stop. It's a gain of 16. And that's something Fresno State wants to do is establish the running game behind this massive offensive line. Logan Mankins is a bit banged up. Joe Shy, who did not start, did not play a week ago, ending his 31-game consecutive streak, is back in the starting lineup. And there is the starting defensive front for Hawaii. Travis LeBoy will be called upon a lot more to make plays in this one due to the injury to Houston Ala. And Pinnegar gives it back to Davis, and why not? He's out to the 32, gain of five on the play. Eliminian makes another stop. And the linebackers for Hawaii. Everybody is talking about number 10. You hear from the coaching staff, watch number 10. He certainly stands out on the tape. Pisa Tinoa Samoa, he's that player, and he's that good. And there, the secondary, Hiram Peters has already returned three interceptions for touchdowns this season. And there is Pisa, and we'll watch for him throughout the game. Hand off to Adam Jennings, the wide receiver on the end around, picking his holes, finding some running room, able to turn the corner out to the 46-yard line. Chris Brown made the stop. Steve, there's an old saying. If you don't practice against the run, you can't defend the run in a game. And that's the criticism of a run and sure spread offense, and you're seeing Fresno State come out testing that theory. They're looking at Hawaii and say, okay, you guys throw it 60 times in a game. You throw it 60 times in practice. When do you defend the run? Well, let's see if you can defend it tonight. So they're coming right at him, saying we're more physical than you can be. Again, Shaq in the backfield as a fullback leading the way, doing a good job leading the way for Rodney Davis. Finally brought down, fumble, and Hawaii says they have it. And let's see. Looked like he poked it free, but they're going to say that Fresno State regained possession. Rodney Michael, the center, looked like he recovered the fumble. Well, Davis gets a huge hole, nice spin, and then he fights for extra yardage. And as he's fighting for it, oh, there goes the ball. You're right. Hiram Peters knocks it out. But he's trying to get the extra yardage and knock Peters off. He forgot the ball. 11 yards on that play which included the fumble that was recovered. And again, it's Rodney Davis. This is a key for many reasons. As Chang looks on, awaiting his second opportunity. Loss of one on the play. Rodney Davis last week only carried the ball nine times 
for 30 yards. Now, again, they were behind 27 well, to nothing. Exactly. That happens. When you when Boise State drills you and they get up three scores in a hurry, you can take Davis out of the ball game because you got to throw to catch up. Second down and 11 after the loss. Quick little pass was nearly intercepted. Marquette Davis was cutting back. And the ball was batted away, hit the ground. Well, you know how we said that you don't practice against the run? They do practice against the pass. <laughs> all right. right, so they jumped all over that little quick screen. And they've seen that a hundred times if they've seen anything. So the second deal, you expect they know how to read that stuff, and they should act quickly, which could make them vulnerable to double moves off of that. Because they'll jack, they'll act very quickly on those things. They figure to see the pass here, Rod, right, on third down and 11 from the 44-yard line. Three receivers for Fresno State. Two out to the left. Single set back to the right. And here's Pinnigan. On the roll. Out of the soccer circle at center. And on the ground, he's brought down at the 36. He'll be shy of the first down. Kevin Milhouse made the stop. It's a game of eight. Yes, there was a soccer game played here last night. Now, some of the markings on the field. Yeah, but you know, you got to get rid of that. You know, now it's football. Soccer's over. So the soccer lines got to go. I, I was a little uh, surprised know? as well. Okay. You know, right, here you go. Right there. Big old soccer. Right there. Surrounding that the bulldog. That has got to go. Did you catch a score of the game last night, Rod? I, no. missed, I missed it. You don't put a bulldog in the It does look like the bulldog is sort of caged in. Yeah, you don't cage the dog. You, you don't want that. Out. This would be a long field goal attempt of 54 yards. Asin Asparuhov. Yeah, just with a pooch punt instead. And it'll be down. Did he get it? He did. Down at the one-yard line. Tremendous, tremendous special teams play by Kevin Murphy. Getting down there to down it at the one. It's a 36-yard punch. Forget about the 36. It couldn't be any better. Of course, Jimmy Chang, the native State. Islander. So the explosive Hawaii team. We'll have to go 99 yards when we come back. Back at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, California. We know Hawaii is explosive. Well, let's find out. 99 yards of grass staring them right in the face. And the building starts to get loud. First down and 10 from their own one. Chang four yards deep in the end zone. That's where he'll receive the snap. And they'll drop back. Under some pressure. Lobs one down the sideline. And well overthrew his target. Again, excellent coverage. Justin Colbert, DeMario Renault was with him. Down to the field, and here's Heather. Well, Steve, as you mentioned, Nick Burley is playing with a broken thumb. Suffered three weeks ago. He had surgery on it. He has a pin from the tip of his thumb all the way down into that knuckle. Now, what makes this difficult is that he's playing with a soft cast, very much like the one that I am wearing as well. Now, he does, does go into a three-point stance, but because of that pin, he cannot bend his thumb at all. This is his practice cast very similar to the one wearing out there. Now he has five sacks on the year. He's integral to getting to the quarterback and their defensive philosophy. All right, minus the manicure, that was rather authentic, Heather. Thank you. Pass down the middle and just too far. Colbert outstretched his arm. Chang just overthrew him. That one was close. It was very close. And Heather's point is a good one because they need to get some kind of pressure on Timmy Chang. The thing with the run and shoot is that they get rid of the ball so quickly, you figure you can't get there. But when they run deep routes or mid-range routes, you've got time to get there. So they have to find a way to free up Burley to get to Chang a couple of times tonight. Pat Hill said pressure is more important than actually sacking the quarterback, Rod. Yeah, but pressure is not any good if you don't really knock the quarterback around. You got to knock him around. You got to get close. Hawaii's only allowed four sacks all season. And here we go. Chang, the quick throw. That's one reason they don't get sacked. They release it so quickly. But Britton Komine could not hang on to it. Would have probably not have had first down yardage anyway. They got some pressure by James Sanders coming on the blitz. Well, they took a couple of deep shots there. And then they had to come back and try to get a first down. Now, see, the run and shoot gets criticized in situations like this because you go, well, if you're a running team, you can pound it out, give your punter a little bit of room. Now they only have 11 yards. Normally, you have 15 to get rid of the ball. So they have, they're in danger here of having a punt block. Danger in safety if Matt McGuire steps on the end line. He is pressed back as far as he can go. It steps up. And the only thing you want there is just get it away. He does more than just getting it away. It's Adam Jennings brought back. And Jennings on the fake will keep it himself. 
And he was brought down at the 35-yard line. Matt Wright brought him down. It's a 54-yard punt by McBride, who doesn't punt that often. It's a 22-yard return. We're scoreless. Wash it. Can't wash it. It's his lucky jersey. What about the streak? Just wash it. I'm with Steve. We have a problem. He's starting today. MLB Authentic Collection, available at these fine retailers. ESPN College Game Day is live from Tallahassee to preview the showdown between Notre Dame and Florida State. College Game Day, followed by Iowa, Michigan, 10.30 Saturday on ESPN. ESPN 2's College Football Friday Night, brought to you by Hyundai. Every Hyundai is backed by America's best warranty, and it's only from Hyundai. The campus of Fresno State sitting at the northeast edge of Fresno against the backdrop of the beautiful Sierra Nevada. And Rod, if you're good, I might bring back that Boise definition where that word came from, <laughs> like we did, did last week. Did you call me Rod or Ron or? Oh, come on. <laughs> Trev's got what? something in his ears. Trev's name. Uh, he's got mine. something. I missed by a letter. Please. It would be so accurate. I'm trying to pronounce Hawaii names all night. And it's picked up. Loose football. And now a flag comes late, all the way down to the 15. It's a gain of 17. That looked like that play was over early, and it kept going. And it's coming back. You know, you get to the edge a little bit when you have a week like Fresno State had. They were embarrassed, and so they turned up the tempo. So everybody at Fresno State is on edge, from Pat Hill oh. on down. Offense. 15-yard penalty. First down. So what I mean by that edge is that guys have dialed it up now. I mean, they want to prove that they got the message. They don't want to be embarrassed. They're going to hit to the to the whistle or the echo of the whistle or beyond the whistle. They're trying to be aggressive. Hill's turning it up, and that's part of the risk you have. You know, guys are going to take some shots to prove they're tough and ready to play now. Look at that record, 27-4 and four at home. 20 and 2 at home in conference games, as this is. First down and 10. After the penalty. And Pinniger puts it on the ground to Rodney Davis, and that'll be a loss on the play. Loss of one. David Gilmore came up to make the stop. College football Saturday. Tomorrow it's Iowa and Michigan. And the primetime game is Alabama against Tennessee. You know, Ohio State's rated higher. Michigan's rated higher. A lot of people think Iowa is the best team in the Big Ten. Right? Well, they're pretty good. And they've got the offense going with Banks at quarterback. But what I don't get is, what's with the grass at Michigan? And they're getting rid of the grass and going to turf. And we're talking about one of the premier universities in the world, and it can't grow grass. At the big house? And it can't grow grass. It's going to be the big fuzzy house now. Fuzzy cement. Pinniger able to connect to his tight end, Duncan Reed. And it's first down yardage, gain of 16. And the Bulldogs are on the move. David Gilmore finally brought him down. You know, you talk about Pat Hill, and all week we've heard that last, we didn't play Bulldog football. First of all, that really means something here, which is impressive, says something about your program. But that was a constant theme. We didn't play Bulldog football. Well, that's playing hard, and that's hitting hard. And we didn't see that last week. They got out hit by Boise State. They want to reestablish their reputation. Handoff. Davis in the running game all of a sudden has slowed. Matt Wright makes the stop after the game of one. I'd say Boise State, and both of these teams can attest to it. They are the class of the conference. In fact, it was Hawaii's defensive coordinator, Kevin Lempa, who said, hey, of both schools, we both got Boise Stated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both teams were hammered in a big way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Boise State is just drilling everybody in the whack now. Second down and nine. Sent Rodney Davis in motion. Sent him out as a wide receiver. Pinniger's looking across the middle, able to dump it off to Alec Greco. And Pinniger was pounded down. David Gilmore came on the blitz. We talk about the hitting and everything that has been going on. And speaking of hitting, those are the signs that we saw all over the football offices 
right. hit Hawaii. You know, we go back to Pat Hill saying, hey, he got soft. They're hitting in practice, went really up-tempo this week. And on the first play from scrimmage, we saw a big hit tonight. Well, yeah, he went soft because he had a bunch of injuries and stuff and said, oh, I'm going to dial it back some and found out that it hurt them. So he dialed it back up this week. Third down and one off the ground, first down. And now it'll be first down and goal. It's a gain of four on the play for Rodney Davis. I tell you, he could have used Hiram Peters in his practice this week because that guy in the secondary for Hawaii, he's a hitter. He's not a big guy, but he brings it every single time. He's only 5'8", 190, but he got a hold of Davis there, just really tripped him up. And Peters is playing with a bit of a stinger. We told you he leads the team with four interceptions. He's returned three of them for a touchdown. Actually, on one of them, he received a lateral. Didn't actually pick off the pass, but still gets credit for taking it to the house. On first down and goal, Hinniger rolling to his right. Got some running room. Dumps it off. Nearly intercepted, but instead it'll just go as an incomplete pass. Abe Eliminian, rather Hiram Peters, got up to make the block. And Peters only goes 5'8". Showed some hops. He's got hops, and he made a great play there because he had a receiver out behind him. And he knew he had help inside. So when he saw the help inside, he said, hey, I'm going to go get the quarterback. And see how high he got up? I mean, you talk about some, some hops there. He did get up there. There is Peters, a starter at cornerback last year when Leonard Peters went down with an injury. Hiram has come in, taken over, and made a lot of big plays. A second down and goal now. Back to the running game. It's Rodney Davis. And where's the indication? Only people with their hands in the air at Fresno State. Now the official gives you the call for the touchdown. And the fireworks go off. Yeah, Pat Hill was like, what are you waiting for? What took you so long? I mean, we saw it from up here. <laughs> he broke the plane. It's like, you can't wait until he's down. If he, if he broke the plane, go ahead and give it to him. D'Artagnan Shaq, the right guard has been uh, used almost as a fullback exclusively so far tonight, was paving the way with a big block. And it's 6-0 in favor of Fresno State. They will shift and get into position to kick the extra point. Hassan Asparuha. He's perfect, 21 for 21 on the season. Uh, points after touchdown. They get 22 of 22. 6 to go. Good field position game so far for Fresno State. Hawaii was trying to go 99 yards. Fresno State took advantage of their field position to score. Thanks, Just put Fresno State up by a score of 7 to nothing. Davis came in ranked right fifth in the lap and rushing 42nd in the nation. His numbers were much better, but again, last week only got to carry the football nine times for 30 yards. Asperu Alba put it in the air. John West is back for it from the two. And West out to the 22-yard line, and Chang will hit the field. Let's go back to Rodney Davis's touchdown run, Steve, and take a look at the great block, and he got watch Michaels. Rodney Michaels right now in the center right there. He is your center. Watch him seal off the linebacker. Takes on the nose, dang, right there, bang. Gets out there in the middle, keeps the linebacker from getting involved in the play. And when you can do that as a center, that's big time. Rodney Michael making his 46th career start. That is the most on Fresno State. One of those consensus preseason all whack guys up for a lot of different awards leading the way on the Rodney Davis touchdown run. So here's Chang and this number two offense in the country. Under pressure. Has to get it away and found a soft spot in the defense and connects to Clifton Herbert. And it's the first down and more, 21 yard gain. Well, they just flooded that zone. You know, too many receivers attacking too few guys in the zone. They will get four receivers out to the left, flooding the zone area, and there it is, wide open. You know, you put too much pressure on a guy, you make a defensive back make a decision about which guy he has to take in his zone. And Timmy Chang just goes the opposite way. Oh, you take that guy, then I'm gonna throw to the other guy. Sam Williams came on the pressure. Which rush Chang, although <laughs> didn't seem to matter much. There's Chang, Fresno State rushing four. Chang again. Good loft on that ball. And 
And what a catch at the 35. Britton Komine able to bring it down after the gain of 22. Wow. It doesn't get much better. I mean, it's a great throw and a great catch. But how he got this thing in there is amazing. I mean, you'll see the tough angle he has here. He's got a defensive back in front of him. Watch this thing. Look at that. Perfect. And not a lot of margin for error. You got the sideline there. That's a heck of a shot. And Kamine comes up with a great grab. Talk about bursting out of the scene. He got his first start two weeks ago against Nevada. Eight catches, 238 yards. He scored a 72-yard touchdown on the first play of the game. So to say he's coming on has been an understatement. Third running play of the game for Hawaii. That's John West to shake it up. It's a two-yard game. And some of the numbers. You mentioned bursting upon the scene here. Well, he's become the guy. And he was a guy who had a great high school career in Hawaii and walked on there. And June Jones wasn't surprised. I mean, he knew he was a great player because he saw him out there in the islands. And he showed up and right there, getting he, it done. Another walk on. He still owns just about every single wide receiving record in Hawaii high school history. And a guy that really nobody knew recruited. Oh, well, they have a history of doing well with walk on. Second down and eight. More pressure coming. And they dump it off and plenty of running room for John West out of the backfield. And he's out of bounds in the 20. James Sanders forced him out after the gain of 12. Well, you know that on the Fresno State side, they saw Chang having way too much time. And they're sitting up there saying, we're not getting even close to him with four. So we're going to bring five or six. And June Jones expected that. He told us he scripts his first five plays. He said, I want to see how they handle things. After that, I'll know what they'll do the rest of the game. They weren't getting close to Timmy Chang. So at that point, he goes, ah, they're going to come with the blitz. I'm prepared for it. Rob, that blitz, though, came from way back in the second. It was a long time for a blitz to get there. He was trying to disguise his coverage. Came late. Now they got... Eight on the line of scrimmage. Some drop out of it. Again, the screen. This time on the far side of John West. And that one doesn't work. Sam Williams said, forget about it. Well, that's on Timmy Chang. And Timmy Chang's got to get the ball to him in a position where he has a chance to make a move. You can't allow West to turn around while he's under pressure by Sanders. You know, Timmy Chang didn't get it there. But he's got to give West a chance to catch the ball and do something with it. Hey, there you see, June Jones is telling him. Chang is out. Sean Withy Allen has checked in at quarterback. He is an elusive runner as well. Number seven. The senior from Hawaii. Tries to take off. And he is dropped. Well, there was no gain on the play. At the 28-yard line, Jason Stewart knew exactly what we knew about with the out. Yeah, not only did they hit hard this week, they studied their playbook. They said when number seven comes into the game, he's going to run the quarterback drop. And so everybody out there is yelling, hey, seven's in the game, seven's in the game. So they get a nice, <laughs> nice stop on him. Chang back in the game. This drive, 4 of 4 for 52 yards. Third down and 14, making some noise in Bogart Stadium. Three receivers out to the left. Chang looking in that direction. Looked to check down on the running back and could not connect with West. Yeah. Wouldn't have been close for a first down anyway. Yeah, Garrett McIntyre was coming with a lot of pressure. And you saw the last two or three plays, Fresno State got some pressure on Timmy Chang. They hadn't done it before, but they get it this time. Top of the screen, here's McIntyre coming free. Mentioned former walk-ons. Garrett McIntyre is a walk-on freshman for Fresno State. And so a field goal attempt, Justin Ayat. Yeah, look to put it through. It'll be a 39-yard field goal attempt. His longest this year has been from 36. He's got the distance, and he's got the points. Hyatt and the Warriors are on the scoreboard. Minute 55 left to play in this first quarter. It's a 7-3 lead. Pat Hill in the Bulldogs. Was the last time Hawaii won here? Now that's Fresno, California. They've never won in the stadium back in 1973. They did have a tie back in 84. Oh, Jennings oh, oh. 
stepped out no way. at the <laughs> two-yard line. Oh, the foot Steve. touched the line. Steve, that is so bad. You can't touch that ball over there. Well, they wouldn't make that mistake in the NFL, Rod. Sunday Night Football on ESPN. The Colts and the Redskins. You know it's going to be Peyton Manning at quarterback. Who's going to quarterback the Redskins? Hey, that's the way the old ball coach does it. Switch it around. Shane Matthews. No relation to our producer, Scott Matthews. He will get the start at quarterback. That's Shane, that is not Scott. <laughs> and that's Sunday Night Football for you on ESPN. It all, ESPN, it all starts with NFL prime time with Chris Berman and Tom Jackson. On first down and 10, handoff. Nearly bucked right back into the end zone. It's a one-yard gain for Rodney Davis. Let's go down to the field and Heather Cox. Steve, most of the time when you look at coaches, they've got playbooks in their pocket, but Coach Hill not only has a playbook, he has a little plastic card to reference the line judges. I guess you're a lot more persuasive if you can actually say, hey, David, did you see that call? You missed that call. Pat Hill pulling that pocket, that card out of his pocket after every play that he's upset with so that he can call each and every official umpire and referee by that first name, hoping to make a point early here in Bulldog Stadium. All right, Heads. You know, we got one of these cards as well, but we've never seen that before. There's Pinnegar on the run and throwing, completing to Steven Spock. And he's out to the 11-yard line. Matt Wright made the tackle. There's, there's Pat working all the officials, working every angle and everything. And the guy he ought to be talking to is the field judge, Jack Hill. I mean, he's got to believe Jack's related to him somewhere, somehow. Work on old Jack. This has been a, a difficult week. Uh, Pat was surprisingly cool and calm in talking to us yesterday. Uh, <laughs> he, was, he was about to bubble over. <laughs> said the 67 points didn't bother him. The loss bothered him, of course. Rodney Davis squirting ahead for the first down. Gain of 11. You, you buy that? He said, hey, obviously the loss bothered. The 67 didn't bother. That, to me, yeah, 67, yeah. I mean, it's got to bother you a little hey, bit. Th this is a guy with a team and a program that he has a lot of pride in. And they've built that up over the years. And when someone hangs 67 on you, it bothers you. You know, it's not just a loss. You know, that, that's an embarrassing beating on national television. He wants his guys to come back. And you can tell by the way they work this week, he's concerned about it. He wants to get it going again. First down and 10. Spock in motion. will hand it off to Davis. Knifing ahead to the 30. Gain of four on the play. Final half minute to play in this first quarter. Well, so far, Fresno State's done what they wanted to do offensively. Be physical, pound the ball, keep Timmy Chang on the sideline. Time consuming. Yeah, so it's really kind of worked out the way they want. June Jones is going, you know, I've run three or four plays just to see if we could do it, but I want to get back to throwing the ball again. You know, he's got a little Steve Spur in him. And so, like, defense, get me the ball, or allow him to score, get off the field, let me do something. And that'll do it. They will not be able to get the snap off. One quarter is complete. Fresno, California. Some whack football. Seven three. Fresno State after one. It was the first time he didn't throw a touchdown pass since his college debut. Struggled against UTEP. Got better against SMU and been real solid in the last three games. He awaits his opportunity with the football. Rodney Davis, the ball carrier, pick up a five on the play and. You know, we've mentioned both head coaches, June Jones and Pat Hill, and, you know, the difference in philosophy is really widespread. June, we know, wants to throw the football. Pat Hill, old offensive line coach, wants to pound the ball a little bit. Yeah, but, you know, they're similar in one respect. They're both kind of out there. They're mavericks, you know. June Jones is a maverick with his offense, and Pat Hill is, ma is a maverick in the sense that he will say and do anything. He believes in himself and college football, and he has some ideas about college, the college game that are different than what most coaches believe, and he's pretty outspoken. And, and Jones says he doesn't even focus on the BCS whatsoever. Marquette Davis, the wide receiver, running it. Should have enough for the first down. He a four on the play. You know, you're right. That's interesting, the philosophy on college football between the two. Jones said he's not concerned with the BCS, doesn't worry about the rules of the BCS, because, you know, quite frankly, they're not really involved in it. And neither is Pat Hill. However, he's up on everything. Yeah, he is consistently pounding on the door, saying this is not fair, this is not right, everybody deserves a chance, we need a playoff and the whole thing. And then offensively, you're right. He's different from June Jones. He wants to pound you, pound you, pound you. 
we're seeing that tonight. One other similarity, both schedule pretty tough. Yeah. They both received a lot of cancellations for some teams that had signed on and thought they needed some easy wins. And that's no longer the case. Rodney Davis, the gain of three. Well, June Jones has followed the game plan that Dick Tomey had when he was at Hawaii. You know, the whole thing of you're a nice guy, everything's wonderful, come to the island, have a good time, and they beat the crap out of you. You know, but June Jones has brought that back to Hawaii, what Dick Tomey established years ago there, and they're real happy about that, and teams don't want to go there. Alabama will go there later this year, but a lot of other teams said, nah, we don't think so. We'll play Alabama again next year. So that's going to be uh, the bowl game for the Crimson Tide. They visit to Alabama, right, they visit to Honolulu. There is a loose football. A flag on the play. On uh, Rodney Davis. Let's see. Holding. While they sort out the penalty, let's look back at quarter number one as we look at the ESPN2 game track. And the Bulldogs would score first. Again, the field position battle was a real big key for Fresno State. Fourth wide, they tried to go 99 yards, and they've been able to pressure. Well, back yep, late they got pressure on him, but the best thing they did was keep Timmy Chang on the sideline with a towel on his head. And that running game forced Timmy Chang to be on the field a lot less, and when he was out there, he got a little bit of pressure. Early on, didn't let the last two or three plays, came with some, some blitzes, put pressure on him, and got him off the field. Now, they have not won, Hawaii have, have not won the time of possession battle in any game this season. So that is not shocking. When they get the football, they go. I mean, they are five and two this season. Four and one, an impressive four and one in conference play. And before Pinnegar can do anything with it, again, flags fly. Yes. Five yard penalty, still second down. Talking about the time of possession. I mean, you know, you think the other team has the football for 17 more minutes than you do, and they win the game, Rod. Okay, so that negative number there means that Hawaii has the ball less than the opponent. That's what the negative is. That's right. Got it. Okay. Well, you know, when you throw the ball that much, you get big plays. You don't need the ball that much. Nice and someone is checked in. No need to worry about him. They're going up top and nearly a great oh. one handed catch. Come on. I don't even have to watch the field to know that must mean pass interference has been called. Abe Eliminian was in the coverage with Jermaine Jameson. Well, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> That is the first time in the game, though, Pinnegar has thrown to one of his wide receivers. Pass well, interference. Defense. Well, Jameson. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, Abe, I, I feel you on this one, because what's going on is, watch Jameson. He's going to be pushing off down the field. He's got good coverage, gets an arm on they Look, they're both pushing off. Now watch this at the end. He turns to make a play, and he gets flagged. How is that pass interference? can that be? Ooh, Pat Hill was saying to his own player there. Is that the back of the huddle? I'll handle the yelling of the officials. After the flag, Bryson Sumlin, the ball carrier, gain of three. Well, you can't let both guys push off, and then when both guys try to make a play on the ball, flag the defensive back. And there is no pass interference if you make contact before the ball's in the air. So it's okay to push. Right, I've worked with you long enough to know that I'm not going to bring up the other side I'm of the argument. I'm waiting for the other argument. No, not, this is an argument I, I can't win. <laughs> Whether I'm right or wrong, I realize I cannot win this argument with you. Uh, Elementia is right. Second down and seven. What a pitch. To someone cuts it upfield across midfield. One of the 48, gain of five on the play. Matt Wright brought him down. Okay, I've calmed down now. Chad <laughs> Kilimoku was also there to make the stop. Yeah, you've calmed down until the next pass interference call. Which hopefully doesn't come for some time. Third down and one upcoming. Well, it looks like they're getting ready to go back to their, their Shaq attack. You know, Shaq's going to line up in the backfield again here, and I wonder if they're going to run it behind him. What do you think? Yep, there he is. With rushing yards. The big fella right there. Leading the way, they do run behind him with Bryson and Sumlin. It's a gain of three and has first down yardage. Now remember, he's a big guy. D'Artagnan Shaq, 6'2", 310. Here he is, right there. He's already leaning because he knows he's going to go that way. 
310 pounds, and he's taking on, oh, Chris Brown. <laughs> oh, Chris Brown is giving 55 pounds, and he's taking all of it there. As if, you know, Fresno State needs to be bigger in the offensive line. Only Toledo has an average height and weight more than Fresno State, so they add the extra guard <laughs> and put him into the backfield. Hawaii is called timeout. We'll step out as well. 7-3, Fresno State. Football Friday night on ESPN2. And the Bulldogs already up 7-3 here in the second quarter, looking for some more across midfield. And Spock was in motion, and it looked like Logan Mankins, the left tackle, who was Offense. banged up a week ago. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Might have been flagged. College football for you on Saturday. Iowa and Michigan will go at it. That's the noon game. And then the night game, Alabama and Tennessee. Casey Clawson has been medically cleared to return. Whether he does or not is a different story, but at least medically he has been cleared to return for that game. That's the primetime game tomorrow night. On first and 15 after they pick up the yellow handkerchief. Pinninger off the play action now. Steps up and is brought down. Looked like there was some room to step up, but he was tripped up. Chris Brown was there along with Travis LeBoy. Well, you knew LeBoy is going to get involved sooner or later. He's, he's their big play guy from the outside. You'll see the play action here, and he will have room. Pressure, zone blitz coming up now. He just doesn't have anywhere to go. Pressure from the outside. LeBoy was the one who got underneath and made the play. You know, you mentioned that Tennessee-Alabama game? Yep. That is a helmet game for Alabama. I'm sorry, a helmet game? A helmet game. You see the helmets and the other guys, you think you can't beat them. They haven't beaten Tennessee since 94. Seven straight. Rodney Davis staying on his feet. Gain of four on the play. Abe Elamimian made another tackle there. And no flag on that stop by Abe. <laughs> I know you'd be happy yeah. about that. No, I think he played pretty well on the pass coverage before. Watch him come up and make a play here. You know, to be a good corner, you got to fight off blocks and make tackles. You see when he tackles high, you hit a guy like Davis down low, he's liable to just run right through you because he's got such strong legs. So this is not a helmet game, though, for example. What we're watching here tonight. For Hawaii? They haven't won here since 73. That's right. It could be a helmet game, but they beat them last year in Hawaii. So it's not technically a helmet game. I like that. Helmet game. Here's Pinniger. Wide open across the middle. Plenty of running room for Duncan Reed as well. Gets a block. And he is brought down at the eight-yard line. 41-yard play. And Pinniger almost exclusively tonight has been throwing to his tight ends. Oh, but there is a flag. There is a flag at the 50-yard line right now. Holding offense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat third down. What a costly penalty for Fresno State. The Bulldogs had real penalty problems early in the season. 11 against Wisconsin, 12 against Oregon State. They went two straight games in which they didn't award their opponent a single first down due to penalties. Then got flagged 10 times last week at Boise State. Yeah, well, Steve, it was really a flagrant foul. Already six tonight, right? Yeah, it was feet to, um, to who grabbed the face mask of a defensive lineman on that last play. And just turned him around. Pat Hill's going to wear out that card Before that Heather showed. Before the ball showed. was snapped, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. Now, Pat Hill doesn't have a good argument on that call. And it was pretty blatant. Rod, is your third false start of the game already. And that would indicate they're certainly out of sync. Take a look here. Look at the left side of your screen. What? Right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's Fitu Tua, who's got Pisa. He's Tina Sumrai, taking care of the, the face mark. Marque Davis on the flanker screen, back across midfield to the 47-yard line. It's a gain of 15 on the play. Hawaii comes off a win over Tulsa. Of course, 
Tulsa's lost 17 straight, the worst losing streak currently in the country. And Fresno State trying to bounce back off the embarrassment of one week ago. The toughest or worst loss, Fresno State under Pat Hill in his six seasons, giving up some 67 points a week ago on the blue stuff of Boise State. Jason Simpson, who was a huge factor in a really good game last week, to Omar Bennett, and it'll be down at the 15-yard line. And we'll step out. This is not, but it only seems like it is, the Fresno State Bulldog Television Network. Christmas tree after General Grant, of course, it's located some 57 miles east of Bulldog Stadium here in Fresno, California. 8.36 to go in the second quarter. And Timmy Chang looked to get something going, and there was motion and flags fly. It was the left side of the line of scrimmage. Before Green the ball Hunter. was snapped, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Junior from Honolulu getting flagged. Now, Steve, remember, they don't run the ball very much. Four attempts for one yard so far. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> but they like to throw it. But remember also, Fresno State got a lot of pressure on them the last time they had the ball. Wow, that averages, I believe, around a quarter of a yard per carry. Your math is good. <laughs> First down and 15. They fake the play action. Nobody buying it. Trying to set up the screen. And out of the six-yard line, Nate Elowa. And Sam Williams made the stop. It's a loss of floor. Four. Took a lot of time to set that up and then not a lot of yardage for it. Well, they're lucky that they only lost four because Fasatelli was hanging out there and got pushed away. Linebacker was there looking to stop the screen and I thought was in position to make a play and got, got knocked off at the last second. Hawaii State clearly, Hawaii is clearly losing the field position battle. They seem to be backed up all the time, Rob. Late and a half to go here in the second quarter. Here comes the pressure. They pick up the blitz, get it away, and a man wide open. Justin Colbert on the far side, and that is the textbook. You pick up the blitz, find the quarterbacks all yeah. on a one and on. Exactly. And, you know, we talked about old sayings about run and pass. There's an old saying about a blitz. You throw where the blitz comes from. That's because they've got to cover that side. So, blitz comes from the left side. Where's Timmy Chang look? He looks to the left side, throws it there, because that's where the weakness is when the blitz comes from that side. Chang last week became the number one passer in school history and in total offense. He needs to average 283 passing yards for the rest of his career. He's got a shot at Ty Detmer's all-time passing record. Third down and four. Chang, quick screen out to the left. It's Colbert, makes the spin move, and that allows him to get first down yardage and a gain of 10. Nick Burley was the man who finally brought him down. Advantage, Colbert. I mean, he was sized up. They had him dead to right, short of the first down. But he's a good player. He knows he's got to meet, beat one man. That's his job, and he does, right there. Nice spin move, now he's got the first down. I mean, he just took Tyrone Culver and turned him around. Watch this again. There you are. Oh, see you, Culver. That's why they tell you never close your eyes when you're making a tackle. Eyes up, eyes open, head up. Look, don't close it. On first down and 10, Fresno State again showing some pressure. And they'll bring two extras, and one of them's going to get Chang. James Sanders coming from the safety position, and there's the sack. And again, only the fifth sack allowed all season by Hawaii. I got a question for you. Why do you have play action when you don't run the ball? I mean, watch this. This just takes up time. Uh, we're going to fake the run. No one is going to buy the play action there. I mean, this is a team that didn't run the ball last week until almost the fourth quarter. They've got four runs tonight. So you see play action, nobody's buying it. You're just going to keep coming. Second and 16. Forgetting the play action that time, Chang will just throw it. More great touch on the ball, and he's got it. Jeremiah Cochran. A bit up for grabs, but Culver couldn't get it down. Cochran did, and you got to love the touch. 
the air that Chang puts underneath the ball. Well, you're seeing some great throws and some great finishing plays at the end. The receiver's getting up making catches. Cochran here, he's the biggest of the Hawaii receivers at six feet. And look at him go up here and make this play. And the ball was right there for him to make a play. And that's the key. Timmy Chang gives his receivers a chance to make a play. He doesn't throw the ball out of bounds, doesn't overthrow him. He gets it where they have a chance to make a play. Rob, that's significant what you said. The tallest of the wide receivers at six feet. Yeah. They got a lot of smurfs out there. It's a bit of an oddity, but they can all catch and all can run. Cochran couldn't grab that one. It'll go as an incomplete pass. The last play was a gain of 41, and that is the longest of Cochran's career, the junior from California. Well, you know, the Smurf receivers is really kind of different from the trend we're seeing in college football. Everybody goes with the 6'4", 6'5", receivers. Charles yeah. Rogers. Yep, yeah, exactly. Here at Hawaii, they've got like four guys that are 5'8", five, 5'9", five, that they use to spread the field. And their big guy is Cochran at six feet. They are without Chad Owens, who has a knee injury. When he went down, he was the second leading receiver in the rack. I hope to have him back in a couple of weeks. And some more penalty markers. Before the ball was snapped, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. But you know, those penalties, five yarders, they don't phase June Jones. I mean, because of the way he runs the run and shoot, whether it's first and 10 or first and 15 is really no big deal. They're still going to put it up, and they're going to run their short passes to get them five or seven, and then they're going to run their deeper passes. They don't have two or three-yard pass plays. They get it in chunks. Yeah. Second and 15, and let's see. Three receivers to the left for Chang. Looking that way, coming back across the middle. That ball was behind Clifton Herbert, and he went back and made a play, and he's close to first down yard, and James Sanders brought him down. Gain of 11, so they're getting it back in chunks. Well, they had three receivers in that area, and I wasn't sure which one Timmy Chang was trying to throw to. Now, watch this ball. You're, you may see a couple of receivers flash across your screen. There you see two of them right there. Oh, yeah. And there was a third one over there as well. Could have been for Comedia. Exactly. Here you go. They flooded all three of them run right in that area, and that's unusual. You don't see teams flood an area like, like that with receivers that close together. Third down and four. Only four seconds to snap the football. Let's see. 2-1. Nope. There is a flag down. Nope, he didn't get it off. And it's caught by Herbert, but let's see. Yeah, he did not get it off. I mean, you and I, I Before was looking the at the clock. snapped. Delay. Yeah. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Yeah, the moment you made the reference to the four seconds, I looked at the clock, and it was at zero before they snapped the ball. And that's penalty, right? That is a penalty okay, this okay. year in the NCAA. All right. It's a new penalty now. And so you agree with that call, right? You're not going to argue that. Now, anymore. how often do I disagree with call? <laughs> <laughs> Just would like for them to get things right most of the time. And, and, so, and so would they. They'd like to get it right most of the time. Third down and nine. 11 penalties already in this game. Making some noise in Fresno tonight. Three seconds to get it off. They do. Here's Chang. And a seam, and Clifton Herbert couldn't come up with the football. Well, Chang put the ball where it had to be. I mean, he really does get the ball in there on the seam very well. And there's not a lot of room when you see this. Look how close the receivers are. They are doing an option. They are forcing one defensive player to make a choice as to which of those guys he will jump to, and then Chang hits the other guy. Not a lot of room, but he sticks it in there. Justin Ayat. Will come on, attempt a 50-yard field goal. Yeah, we had one crack at a 50-yarder. He missed from 60 against Nevada. But this from 50 for a new career high. It is up and it is good. Justin Ian. His previous career high had been 36. He just demolished that. It's a 50-yarder. This is Justin Ayat. He was good from 50 yards away. However, that is not a career high for him. He did hit a 55-yarder last year, one of eight kickers in school history, to hit a 50-plus-yard field goal. 36 is his high for the season, but now it's 50. And we're in a one-point game. It's picked up by one of the big boys for Fresno State. 
and it was Garrett McIntyre. Right, uh, good field position to open. Coming up tomorrow, college football at noon Eastern at Notre Dame and Florida State. Before previous meetings, in those two schools have been decided by seven points or less. Penn State and Ohio State, that headlines the later games at 3.30 Eastern. Significant rod, Adam Talaferro of Penn State will take to that field for the first time since that spinal cord injury a couple of years ago. And that'll be a great sight to see. Yeah, it's tremendous. More penalty markers. Hey, in Notre Dame, uh, Florida State, that game is all about Chris Ricks. And I just don't know how Greg Jones is going to get a whole lot of yards Before rushing. the ball is snapped, contacting the neutral zone, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yep. Yep. You're right. Notre Dame has allowed yep. an average of 80 yards rushing, yep. so it's going to be on the arm yep. of Ricks. Number six in the country, and so you figure Ricks is going to have to have a day, and this is a, you know, he's only thrown 32 passes in the last two games. He's going to have to throw probably 30 in this ball game to loosen up Notre Dame. It has major BCS implications as well. Everybody buzzing about the first BCS poll coming out. Let's go down to Heather after the game of three. Well, Steve, when Hawaii landed in Boise State a couple weeks ago, it was about midnight Idaho time, but they, instead of going to bed, they went and studied film and actually practiced for a couple hours. Why? Well, they call it warrior time. They say it's a risky proposition, and June Jones says everybody thinks they, they're crazy, but they travel Hawaii's time zone with them wherever they go. They travel about 31,000 miles back and forth through 30 different time zones, and they hope that by not mentally crossing those time zones, they find a little bit of normalcy in all the chaos, Steve. Handoff, and it should be first down yardage, gain of three, Rodney Davis. Heather talking about uh, normalcy. Even our conference call was an issue. Talk about time zones. We had Hawaii's time zone, California, Idaho, Massachusetts. Our conference call was even an issue at the time. So. Yeah, but we got it done. But I'm trying to figure this out. Okay, so they're here on the West Coast. So right. that's gotta be a three hour time difference for them. So it's probably, what, like 4 o'clock in the afternoon to them or something like that? Yeah, they're wondering why the lights are on. Yeah. Maybe that's why they've been struggling. Ah, no, it's been Fresno State. That's why they're struggling. First down and 10. Pinnegan trying to set up the screen. And Hawaii saw that coming from a mile away. Let's send it back to the studio. Here's Reese. All right, Steve, our high school showcase game is underway. The dominant high school football program in the nation. De La Salle has won 131 in a row. They're a power in the state of California against Freedom. That is Freedom's Chris Bodish ball picked off by Willie Glasper. It sets up the Spartans for their first touchdown of the night. Britt Cecil scoring and number one De La Salle trying to make it 132 in a row up by seven. It's been some 3,975 days since De La Salle lost a football game. That is amazing. Hinegar stumbles, but has so much time he's able to regroup, set up, and complete to Bryson Sumlin out of the backfield. It's a gain of two. Yeah, I like the idea I had about De La Salle. What was that again? You know, have him play whoever is number two each week. I mean, as long as that streak is going, 131 right. games, you know, just uh, have him line up number two. That'd be Parkview this week. Would it be tough to schedule that, though, Rod? Ah, come on. <laughs> we can make anything happen. Week to week. <laughs> <laughs> Details. Traveling might be an issue. <laughs> Third down at 11. Pinniger out of the gun. Straight drop. Pressure from the backside. Didn't feel it, and he'll go down. Brought down at the 35. Kinai Alapa able to make the sack. Loss that, of five. That one's on Pinniger. And he's got to get rid of that ball. I mean, he had enough time to get rid of it, but instead he held it long and took the sack. Now, he's a youngster. He's a redshirt freshman. Look at this. If you're thrown on rhythm, now, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Now, he hangs on. He's waiting too long. He's got to know. No more time. It's got to go. Got to get rid of that thing. Keani Alapa, last week, coaching staff told us played his best game. And when they go to Nicola Dime, he's a guy that moves to the middle. And he had the pressure there. Jason Simpson is back to punt from the 20-yard line. Omar Bennett is back deep again. No Owens for Hawaii. No Michael Brewster either. The two of the big return players for Hawaii. So here's Bennett, number 23, cutting it upfield, making a couple of moves, and he is brought down from behind at the 35-yard line. David Adamo on the special team stop. You know, Heather was on the field now, Rod, but you can never tell where she's going to show up. Where'd she go? I don't know. Heather? 
Steve Coachill is infamous for his superstitions and his memento laden office. So while there was a little break in the action, I decided to sneak up into the office and take a quick look behind closed doors of Pat Hill's office. Before every game, Pat's wife Kathy gives him a lucky penny. He sticks it in his shoe. Now if the team loses, he immediately throws it out in the locker room. But if they win, he immortalizes it up here on the wall of fame. Heather Bay get out of there because Hill and the team will be coming in soon. Less than 90 seconds away from halftime. Michael Bass. Mike Bass. Gain of seven on the play. Bass, their top rusher. Missed the last three games with a sprained right knee. The guy averages nearly eight yards per carry. But, of course, they don't run the football. They are Hawaii. Just 26 carries, and he's their top running back. Yeah, but what's that have to do with lucky pennies? Actually, not a whole lot. He get those lucky pennies back in Pat Hill's office. Here's Chang throwing and completing. Far side for Justin Colbert across midfield. Gain of 12. We send it back to Reese. Steve, coming up at halftime, we'll talk about the Big Ten. It's a big weekend to shake out the conference race. A couple of big games for Ohio State and for Michigan, both at home. We'll talk about that. Our high school showcase, De La Salle. The Spartans have won 131 in a row. We'll see if Freedom can challenge them. And we'll also take you on the Friday night tailgate and a mountain climbing experience with Holly Rowe. We look forward to that. Reese coming up with uh, Trev, I believe his name is, and Mark as well. They complete the pass, but Colbert slipped down. We'll call it a gain of one and a timeout with 45 seconds to play here in the half. Well, this first half has been played at Fresno State's pace. I mean, they've run the ball. They've kept Timmy Chang on the sideline a lot. They haven't given up too many big plays, no scores. They've done it right. Hey, you know, we hear Heather's still down in that office. Heather, get out of there. There's only 45 seconds left in the half. Steve, up here is Hat Row. Each and every year, Pat Hill takes one hat and one hat only, wears it for every practice and every game. And he records the score of each game on the infamous hat. Now, guys, don't tell anybody, but when I was sneaking around, I happened to find the playbook. And I'll be down in a little bit, but I got to do a little reading down here. Wow. You're not going to believe some of these trick plays. I'll be down in a bit. All right, looking forward to seeing him. I guess those trick plays will be used in the second half, huh? Coming up. Yeah, he's been pounding in the first half. You know, if Pat Hill finds Heather in his office at halftime, he's going to be one annoyed. You know, coach. but she could talk her way out yeah, of it. Yeah, if it's she you or could. I, forget yeah. about it, right? Yeah, she can get out of that. She'll talk her way out of it. Pat was not wearing a hat <laughs> at the time on the sideline. Here's Chang throwing and incomplete. Missed the mark on Jeremiah Cochran. Awan Dials had the coverage. We want to send a special thank you to the wives and the husbands and children who are serving alongside their military sponsors at the Naval Air Facility in Atsugi, Japan. We thank you for all you do in support of your family and Carrier Air Wing 5. Pretty special. Tough job. Big sacrifice. Good job, tough. Third down and nine, or more important for that man. Here's Chang, under some pressure now. Lofts one, wide open, it's Fresno State. It's D. Meza. Too much air, too much loft. Meza was the only player in the neighborhood. It's an interception, his second of the season. Well, Meza was the only one in the neighborhood because he came off of his guy. He saw what was going on, but there is a flag down. And Mays is in coverage, and he happens to look back and he says, whoa, wait a minute. Ball's in the air. And Bryce McGill, watch McGill, gives Timmy Chang the pressure. And Mays came off his receiver to make the play, but there is a flag down. Passer, contact with the helmet. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So it was Bryce McGill who was putting the pressure on, and they said it was the hit to the helmet. That's a no-no. You can't, you can't get to the head. You cannot hit up high. Ooh, that was close. Looked like he got right at the numbers. Did he lead with the helmet though? Was it head first? He looked face up to me. Looked like he put his face right in there. Penalties continue to be a huge issue for Fresno State. And so Chang able to get away with a mistake although he took the hit. John West. Another running play, that time a bit of a draw to gain of seven down to the 22. 20 seconds left in this first half. Why 
play has one timeout left. And a timeout has been taken. Well, Steve, still a big play. If that is not a bad hit, the ball belongs to Fresno State. Okay, he led with the helmet. That's the problem. I mean, from that angle, it's pretty clear. He led with the helmet right at the chin. That's a knockout punch. And it's a safety issue. You just don't allow it. I mean, the first angle looked to me like he was coming in face right. first, but from there you can see he led with the crown of the helmet right at the chin. 11 seconds left. Still have a timeout, so they can throw across the middle, and they do! Chang to Britton Colline. Sanders brought him down. Gain of 13, and they will take that last time out. Six seconds left in the half. Hawaii in a scoring position. Welcome to the future of education. Shape your own reality. Knowledge. Experience. California State University, Fresno. California's premier. Talking about it, Rod could take a shot here at the end zone. One shot with seven seconds left. And Justin Ayat, though, the kicker is out there. Out of the hole to the backup quarterback, Sean Willie Allen. Keep that in mind. It's a 26-yard field goal attempt, and it is good. There is a flag down for a change. Well, see, I, I think the reason he probably wanted to go and kick this is because they haven't played great in the first half, but they could go in ahead 9-7. You know, as long as you don't take a sack, you probably could get one playoff, but it is rolling the dice. The penalty looks like it'd be running into the kicker. Could have been Awan Dyer. Okay. okay. Want to take points off the board here, Rod? Personal foul, roughing the kicker. The penalty is declined. Field goal. And Fresno yeah. State doesn't want to take. That's rather. Yeah. That's what why I was doesn't say? Yeah. Never take the, the old bugaboo. Right. Never take points off the board. Three seconds left. Nine seven. Hawaii. Since 1962, one conference has stood apart from the rest distinguishing itself on the playing field and in the classroom. Making a difference in the lives of student athletes to help them build a foundation for successful careers. Celebrating 40 years of competition, this is the Western Athletic Conference, where actions count. Three seconds left on the clock. All the points for Hawaii coming off the foot of Justin Ayat. And there you see just the rolling into him. And again, this goes back to the safety issue. Guy who is vulnerable has to be protected. Sure. Ayat has hit from 39, 50, and 26 tonight. And that has silenced this crowd here in Fresno. Well, that's because they've controlled the game. Fresno State has controlled the game, but they're down 9-7. Kick on the ground. Fumbled by Greco, the tight end, but he was able to recover, and that is the final play of the half. Well, Steve, that first half was played at Fresno State's pace. I mean, they dominated running the ball. They controlled things defensively, didn't give up the big scoring pass, but still, they go into the locker room down 9-7, and this is a team that's coming off a of shellacking last week at Boise State. And, of course... Pat Hill is the head coach, the angry head coach you might expect for Fresno State. He's with Heather. Coach, this is a team that continues to be plagued by penalties. How do you address it in the half? <laughs> we just got to keep playing hard. I'm not too worried about the penalties right now. I mean, I, I, I just want to play aggressive and win. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck. I thought that was a good question by Heather. Penalties called back a number of plays, had the interception on Chang, except for the penalty. And, of course, they got the football back and kicked the field goal and because of that. They have the lead here at halftime. We'll see you for the second half. Now send it back to Reese Trev and Mark. <laughs> Steve, thank you very much. Hawaii has the lead on the mainland. More college football Friday night from Fresno, California. Thoughts from Heather Cox in just a bit.
Heather had an interesting thought going to halftime with Pat Hill. Really, I mean, Fresno State did everything they wanted to do outside of the penalties, and that's the reason they're trailing by two at the half. Yeah, and I think they're a little sensitive about that. I mean, they really did control the first half. They ran the ball the way they wanted to. The only thing they didn't do besides the penalties, they didn't get any big plays. They aren't getting anything out of their wide receivers. One catch by Marquette Davis, and they need to get something down the field. On the other hand, Hawaii, they can explode at any point in time. And Fresno State will receive the football to open up quarter number three. Justin Ayat has three field goals, 39, 50, and 26 yards. And it's a short kick taken by Fresno State. And it's Garrett McIntyre returning his second kick already of the game. Not bad for a defensive tackle. As we look back at some of the first half action, really, Fresno State started running the football very well. Well, you know, the tempo, the control, the ground game, they had it going the way they wanted. Get the touchdown with Davis here. And they really did start off well. Defensively, Bryce McGill bringing the pain. That's what they wanted to do, set the tempo. Timmy Chang did, however, throw the ball well. He did not get into the end zone. No touchdown passes, just three field goals for the Warriors. Eight penalties in that first half for 68 yards, just five for 35 for Hawaii. And they come out running the football. Rodney Davis brought down from behind by Isaac Sopoaga. Gain of five, and we go down to Heather Couch. Steve, I had a chance to catch up with June Jones. Amazingly, he said the biggest problem right now is dealing with the crowd noise. He said their line is having a terrible time hearing the snap count, so they're going to what they call their two-minute cadence, which is a silent count, hoping to alleviate that problem. Also, they said they're looking for a little man one-on-one -on -one coverage in which they can break some big offensive plays. Well, Back to you. Heather, they don't have to worry about audibleizing. That's something Hawaii just does not do. In fact, Jones told us they've only audibleized three times all season. They call the play and they stick with it. That time, Fresno State going to Marquette Davis, and he is just across midfield, gain of 10. Well, we just talked about that. He only had one catch in the first half, Marquette Davis. You go into halftime, you start looking at what do we do, what do we do well, what didn't we do well? And the thing that jumps out is Marquette Davis not involved. We got to come out in the second half, find a way to get him involved. That's what Fresno State had to be talking about at halftime. Besides, continuing with the ground game. We asked about Paul Pinniger, who struggled last week, as did the rest of the team. Would there be a quarterback change? They think about it in-game. They shot back quickly. No, never even thought about going back to Jeff Brady. They do want to put it on Pinniger. Davis the ball carrier. Maybe a gain of two on the play. Well, you know, Davis started out pretty fast. You know, he had 6.2 yards average on his first nine carries. But in his last six, only three and a half yards. So Hawaii has come around to expect the stretch play and how to play it. And handling him, they know that they're in for a physical game. So you're going to have to open it up if you're Fresno State. And that's the guy who can open it up for you. Marquet, the older brother, Rodney Davis, transferred from Fresno City College. Team up with his older brother. And that pass incomplete. Again, looking for Marquet. Clearly want to get him more involved some of the halftime adjustments, although not all that successful right now. Well, Elamimian had him just dead to right. He's manned up on him. He was covering by himself, did a nice job on him, and a good call by the official, no pass interference. Got a good look into the eyes of Paul Pinniger, the coaching staff told us, hey, the difference between this guy and David Carr, Carr might have been a little more accurate, but Carr had three years of grooming that Pinniger does not have. He is a red shirt freshman, Paul Pinniger. It's a very favorable comparison. Absolutely. The number one pick in the draft. College superstar David Carr. Here's Pinniger feeling some of the heat now, feeling some more of it. He'll take off. And he's got first down yardage. And he is out of bounds at about the 30. It's a gain of 12. Steve, I really believe that your quarterback has to make two or three running plays a game to give you a chance. Now watch what Pinniger sees. Nothing. He's got nothing open, so he feels himself sliding to the right. And then Bryce Selman does a nice job of getting a great block so he can pick up the first down. Since 1999, Fresno State quarterbacks have thrown 118 touchdown passes, just 29 interceptions. That is a tremendous ratio. Obviously, most of that on the arm of David Carr. On first down and 10, from the 35, hitting a quick drop and a quick throw. And it could not be handled by DeAndre Gilbert. And it falls as an incomplete pass and some good coverage by Hawaii. Some of the first half numbers. Well, you knew you wouldn't get much rushing out of Hawaii. 
But look at this. Passing yards. And 102 on the ground for the Bulldogs. First downs only seven for Hawaii. After the incompletion. Second and ten. Here comes the pressure by Hawaii. They pick it up and the throw is behind Jermaine Jamison. Pinniger was off the mark there. Well, Steve, there's another battle going on out there, and it's on the corners. And the corners for Hawaii are beating the Fresno State receivers. And they're challenging them, pressing, getting up in the face, and just daring them to throw fade routes. And Marquet Davis is having a great battle, and he's not winning. But he's competing like heck out there. It's fun to watch those guys right now, but Hawaii is gaining more and more confidence in the play of their corners on the Fresno State receivers. No surprise, Rod, right after what you say, that Hawaii does lead the whack in pass defense. They're third in rush defense, total defense, and scoring defense in the whack. So much exposure for their offense. Hawaii can D up on you, too. A little dump off across the middle to Jermaine Jamison. He was hit down from behind at the 25. It's a first down, gain of 11 on the play. Travis LeBoy banged him down from behind. Well, it's all about matchups, and if your two outside receivers are getting handled by the corners outside, your third receiver should have an advantage over a safety or a linebacker or a nickel back, and Jamison had the advantage that time. LeBoy, the coaching staff, told us he has the most talent on our defense. Just hasn't shown it yet, so he's got the potential. Still waiting for him to show everything. Getting getting much more action with the injury to Houston Ala. First down and ten. They didn't get that one away either. That's going to be the layer game. Another penalty against Fresno State. Let's go back to Reese. All right, Steve, our high school showcase, the number one team in all the land, De La Salle from California against Freedom, both in the greater Bay Area, as I'm sure Rodney knows well, and Maurice Drew bursting through a huge hole on the left side, getting down to the three. He would punch it in. De La Salle rolling 19-7. Uh, Maurice Drew is the true. He did a job on Long Beach Poly a couple weeks ago, and he's a tremendous prospect. Bryson Sumlin on the inside handoff. Keen of three. Just getting some of the penalty back now. Keely Nahe Noah made his second tackle of the game. And De La Salle. Said that nicely. We're getting back to De La Salle. You know, it's gotten old in the Bay Area what De La Salle does. I mean, when you pick up the paper, it's a whole hum another win for them. And so everybody in the Bay Area kind of takes De La Salle for granted. It's like, oh, how much did they win by this week? The average score of beating their opponents during the streak, 47 to 8. That's the average score during their 131 game winning streak. Vinegar throwing. And it is incomplete for Duncan Reed. Again, good coverage by Hawaii. They've played well in the secondary, and there wasn't much room for Pinniger to drop that thing in there. You know, you see a little change in philosophy for Fresno State. First half, one completion to a wide receiver, four in the second half, and they're, they've looked to the wide receivers a lot more now, and you'll probably see it again here. Fresno so far, five of eight on third downs. They're 32% on the season. Look to improve on that tonight. Here's the pressure. Pinniger is dropped at the 40. It's Travis LeBoy making a man-sized play. His second sack of the game. The pressure comes from the right side for Pinniger. First up the middle, and he runs right into it. Right side, additional pressure. He couldn't get outside. LeBoy coming straight up the middle. And Steve, this is huge because it takes them out of field goal range. And Rod, again, penalty really hurts. Yep. The delay of game in that case. Fourth and 24, they'll punt it away. But Jason Simpson looking for a corner. And it will drop and go out of bounds. Where will they mark it? How about the four-yard line? Good job by Simpson. Again, field position has not been Hawaii's friend tonight. Yet they lead anyway, 9-7 here in the third quarter. Retirement plans from the principal financial season average 
but two of his punts have forced the Warriors back to the one-yard line and the three-yard line. Here they are now. Look at the average field position. And he's done a great job. Forget about his average. It's where he forces Hawaii to start. And Chang is thrown out of his end zone. And nearly intercepted. It was dropped by Colbert. Should have been caught by Colbert. And then, if not, then it should have been caught by Renault. DeMaurier could have intercepted that pass. They had the right play, right formation. Yeah, this is the thing. I remember when uh, I was with Stanford and Bill Walsh was there. And he'd say, you know, you can't drop the ball. You get the right play call against the right defense. The quarterback makes the right throw. You get the right read, and you drop the ball. You know, all these things have to work out right. And then you drop the ball. You can't have that. Well, Robert De Niro told me to never drop names, Rob. Right? I never Listen met him. You, yeah. I call him Bob. <laughs> Here's Chang to throw. And fire and complete again. Not a soft part of that Fresno State defense. It's Jeremiah Cochran for the gain of 11. And gets him out of trouble. You remember the last time Hawaii was backed up. They threw the ball deep two times then had to try and struggle and get the first down didn't happen this time they came out backed up they were looking to pick up the first down and get some room out of here Chang started the season with a fractured pinky suffered during two of days this most of last season with an injured wrist got a medical red shirt because of it and that will give him a chance to break Todd Deckman's all-time NCAA record if he can stay healthy. They're after him here. Chang on the run with a pump fake. And he'll just get out of bounds trying to avoid the hit. And he didn't. They hit him after the fact out of bounds. Yeah, I think they not only hit him afterwards, they got the face mask. And another penalty against Fresno State, and that would have to be considered another bad penalty against Pat Hill's team. Well, it, and it goes back to what Heather said, and she asked Pat Hill about it at halftime. What did he tell your team about this? You heard Mark May say at halftime. Personal foul, face mask, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Third personal foul against right. the Bulldogs. And Mark May said he had to tell his team to be smart. This is not very smart quarterback is clearly going out of bounds there is no reason to even hit him no reason it's three four yards outside of bounds right. Jason Stewart grabs the face mask and takes the hit on him. and don't be fooled by the fact it's a face mask if it wasn't that it could have been for a hit out of yeah. bounds either way they were going to get flagged there's you twice as many penalties as Hawaii Jack from the 30 Steps up, throwing deep down the middle of the field. And they continue to just miss. That was Cochran trying to beat double coverage. Had a step, but again, the ball just slightly overthrown. Well, the coverage wasn't bad. I mean, both, both defenders read it clearly. D. Mays and Cameron Worrell read the deep route, and they closed down. It was going to have to be a perfect pass to get it in there. Cameron Worrell, the top tackler for Fresno State. Just about to top everything. Though. Leads him to three interceptions as well. Second down and ten after the long miss. Good look into the eyes of Timmy Chang. Fresno State will rush four and get pressure. Burley chasing him. And Chang's able to stick it in there with Justin Colbert. Just shy of the first down. We'll see where they spot it now. Well, I thought maybe it wasn't a completed pass. I thought it came out. And there's a player down. It's Burley, too. Burley was chasing Chang. They are moving the chains, so it'll go for a first down. Burley is not moving. And he was already hurting with the, the bad thumb. And sometimes as a lineman gets outside chasing a quarterback outside of the pocket, you don't see where some things are coming from. You're out in space and somebody gets a little, little push on you, you can fall awkwardly or get, get caught up with someone. Burley has 19 career sacks. That is fifth most among active players in college football. And he's already set for a trip to Hawaii. Not against the Warriors, but to play in the hula ball. Uh, 
Oh, it goes right on that thumb. Yeah. Look at that. It falls right on that thumb. That's the one where he's got the pin in the thumb, the broken thumb, and he went right on it. He's out there in space chasing the quarterback, trying to break his fall. It goes right on top of the thumb. An outstanding defensive player and really the star of that Fresno State defense. So he's the guy that gets double and triple team teamed every single week. And that's probably the reason his numbers aren't what you might expect. Uh, he's a warrior, though. I mean, he's been playing and practicing with a lot of pain in addition to the double teams that he sees. See if uh, Heather gets any word on Nick Burley. It is a first down. The ball now the 42-yard line. Handoff to Michael Bass across midfield. Bring up a second down and short. Claude Sanders made the tackle for Fresno State. Steve, I want to go back to something you said about Hawaii not calling audibles and only three all season long. Well, the way that Fresno State tries to deal with that, they try to show one coverage, disguise the coverage, and then flip to something else after they think Hawaii has made their move at the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they've gotten away with it. Sometimes Fresno State's been caught late on a blitz or two like you've seen before. But now they're showing a two deep coverage. They want Timmy Chang to read that, and they'll move out of that probably to something else. Just get the snap off before the delay, and again they run the football. And Michael Bass, no gain. Jason Stewart in the middle of that defensive line for Fresno State. Hey, Jones is, is sort of stubborn that way along the lines of, hey, you know, the play I call is the play we're going to run. We don't audible. He also said he doesn't worry about matchups. We said, hey, do you do anything special against Burley? Nope. He doesn't look at matchups. He watches schemes, but not individual matchups, he said. Hey, play the game. Just play the game. All right, guys, against your Play guys. the game. So like Barry Bonds against the Angels. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> Third down and two. I've been listening to this conversation, folks, since we were sitting in Pac Bell, and Rob brought me my first set of garlic fries. Pressure, Chang, taking down. He got rid of the football, and there's the flag. Oh, not another one. Garrett McIntyre was the player that brought Chang down, and that'll be intentional grounding. Not even close to being anywhere near outside the tackle box. Well, not only was he not outside the tackle box, he had a guy draped all over him. And I don't believe the ball got beyond the line of scrimmage. I mean, you got to have a guy in the area, and you got to be outside the tackle box, and the ball's got to get beyond the line of scrimmage. He's not outside the tackle box, and I'm not sure the ball got to the line of scrimmage. Pressure for Fresno State has been an issue. They had 20 sacks. In their first five games, Rod led the whack by a mile, but none in the last three games. So they have not been getting after the quarterback. They do have one sack tonight. You liked the garlic fries, though, didn't you? They were outstanding. <laughs> they stay with you for a while, though, Rod. <laughs> Only a few days. <laughs> Pat Bell is a beautiful facility. Matt McBriar is back to punt it away. Adam Jennings. Run it up to the 25, and he'll take it and go from there. And he'll be swarmed over at the 30-yard line. It's a 36-yard punt, a five-yard return. Hawaii is still up by two. Warning, the following stunts were performed by professionals. Do not attempt anything from this movie. So, California, you know this is not the only Fresno State Hawaii showdown. They're going to play volleyball, these two schools, in Hawaii tonight. Dave Shoji is the coach of Hawaii's volleyball team, a well known figure. They've got a great, great volleyball atmosphere. So uh, maybe one of these schools will look to sweep volleyball and college football. Pinnegar will hand off. Rodney Davis able to turn the corner. And he has dropped that the 40. Hiram Peters made the stop. Gain of 11 on the play. College football Saturday for you. The early game has 14th ranked Iowa against number eight Michigan. Two of the three undefeated teams in the Big Ten. And the nightcap, Alabama against Tennessee. Again, Casey Clawson medically cleared to return. And Philip Fulmer will have to make a choice as Fulmer goes for career win 100. You're not going to ask me about how I had all that volleyball knowledge? I thought that would be Heather all over yes, the it was. So obvious, huh? Here's Pinniger. 
Looking downfield for a man, and he's got it wide open was Jermaine Jameson. And there's some of the big play the Bulldogs have been lacking. Yeah, we talked about it at halftime, that they were running the ball, controlling the line of scrimmage, but they weren't getting anything out of it. And sooner or later, you knew they were going to have to come up with a big play. Well, here it is. They get great protection. They go max protection and just go ahead and let Jermaine Jamison get out there on Kelvin, Kelvin Milhouse. And he's wide open. Gain of 39. And they'll start at the 20. Two receivers to the left for Pinninger, but they put it on the ground. Again, it's Davis. Rodney trying the left side, turns the corner, and finally bumped out at the eight yard line. We sent it back to Reese. Steve, our high school showcase, number one team in the land, De La Salle, just before the half against Freedom, already up 19-7. This is Tony Benzwanger kicking that thing to the moon. He was only 27 yards out, perhaps irritated over a couple of missed opportunities for the point after. It's 22-7 at the half. In their winning streak, Reese, there have only been four games decided by seven points or less. And the De Salle looks like they're on the way, potentially, to another blowout up big at halftime. Hittiger loves one. Marque Davis is there. Where's the call? There it is. Touchdown, Fresno State. And flags go off along with the fireworks. Well, I can tell you why the flag went off. Elminium got ticked off, and he grabbed one of the cones out of the corner of the end zone and slammed it down. And he lost his composure when he didn't like the call and just, just went nuts. I mean, he grabbed the cone, the pylon actually, Slammed it down, walked up towards the official. He got flagged right away. Watch my life. Away. The touchdown is good. The penalty of these sets. Half the distance on the try. And the explanation for June Jones. All right. We know he catches it. Did he get his foot down? That's the question. One foot. Yes. He's no in. Question. He's in. Yep. He's in. Right foot is in. It has taken, Rod, a lot of time, though, on Marquis Davis's touchdown, on Rodney Davis's touchdown, to wait for the indication on both Fresno State touches. Well, I think it makes sense on that one, because you want to make sure we'll the, get the right. foot is down. Yeah, but the other one, I thought it should have been called right away. You'll explain to me again the idea behind this shifting on the extra point. There's, <laughs> there's got to be a good reason for it. It doesn't work for me. Asparuha will... Look to put it through and get even perfect on the season of extra points. This is, is intact. Four plays, 70 yards. Every play was a first down play. Capped by the touchdown Pinnegar to Marque Davis. And the Bulldogs back on top. Four play, 70 yard touchdown drive in 38 seconds. Hawaii. Wrong. Come on, Rod. Fresno State just happened seconds ago right here. After the way they ran the ball in the first <laughs> half. <laughs> Explosive Bulldog offense. Asparuab kicks it away. John West will take it from his five-yard line. And it'll be dropped down at the 15-yard line. And that's where Hawaii will take over. How important is this game for Fresno State? Well, keep in mind, they need three wins right now to be bowl eligible. After tonight, they'll only have four games left, and it's not as if there's a bowl that desperately wants Fresno State like there is Hawaii with the Hawaii Bowl coming back. Well, you have to remember, there are three tie-ins and a fourth one, maybe. The three humanitarian bowl, and then you think about the Hawaii Bowl, and then also beyond that one, the Silicon, Silicon Valley, Valley Bowl. Yeah. Now, Silicon Valley wants San Jose State. Clearly. Humanitarian probably wants Boise State, and Hawaii in Hawaii. Where does Fresno State go? That's the issue. You, if you finish first or second in the WAC, you're assured of a bowl. However, I mean, you could finish third, and the team behind you in fourth could wind up going to the bowl game, and you could be left out. Boise State was left out last year. So because they want flexibility with their bowls and to get the best matchup, that can sometimes leave a team that's higher up out of the bowl picture. Hey, Hawaii was left out last year, 9-3. and three. Yep. Michael Bass, incomplete pass. I mean, think about that. The advantage for Hawaii now 
is that, you know, they're four and one in the conference, five and two overall, but the Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl is in yep. place this year. So they're set up, they're bowl eligible. They're obviously they're staying in. home. And if, if San Jose State is bowl eligible, they're in Silicon Valley. In Silicon Valley. Now, there is the GMAC Mobile Bowl, which also has a time, but they have a choice. They can pick Conference USA and uh, MAC, or they can take the WAC, and they may not do that. So if you're Fresno State, you're hoping that maybe the Mountain West or somebody else doesn't fulfill their bowl allotment so you get a shot. But Fresno State is the start of three straight home games for them where they have been so dominant. Chang looking to get rid of it. It'll go as an incomplete pass, looking to conquer it. Fresno State needs three wins to be bowl eligible. After tonight, they'll only have four games left. Hawaii, they're two wins shy of being bowl eligible. And after tonight, there'll be five games left. So you got to like Hawaii's situation. I think that's right. And we did hear today that there is the possibility that Fresno State would be of interest to the Seattle Bowl or even perhaps the San Francisco Bowl. Bulldog fans do travel. Pat Hill will tell you. 20,000 fans will go on the road to follow these Bulldogs. Third down and 10. Chang out of the gun. Sets, throws, and completes some open running room for Justin Colbert. And he does have enough for the first down. It's a gain of 12. He tried to set up some blockers and make a move. And by that time, there was more help on the way for Fresno well, State. He almost gave up the first down. I mean, Colbert doubled back so he can get more running room and then had to fight back to get the first down. Now, Timmy Chang has done a nice job of hanging in there when he's under a lot of pressure. And you like a quarterback who doesn't get rattled by people around him. And Timmy Chang has shown us that tonight. Rushing four. Set up the screen to Bass. No gain on the play in this Fresno State defense. Starting to tighten up a bit. Nathan Ray made the stop there. You know, I mentioned the Ty Detmer record. Timmy Chang would have to average 283 yards passing career. His career average right now is 313. So it's only a question of staying healthy. And now bowl games count in your personal stats for career. So he has the potential to play some 33 more games. It's just an issue of health. Now remember he had the broken pinky on his throwing hand earlier this year. He's not wearing anything on that hand tonight. So he seems to be over that. If he can stay healthy, he certainly has a good shot at Detmer's record. He's got the head coach to do it for him as well. And they don't run the ball. 68% <laughs> of the time coming in, Hawaii passes the football. By far the biggest disparity run pass the in the country. Snapped. False start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. But the penalties are starting to shift over the Hawaii way, and that would make Pat Hill very happy. Yeah, but at least most of their penalties are the delay of game, false start, which gives them five more yards on first and 15 and the like, second and 14, that sort of deal. And they're pretty comfortable with that. And they take a lot of time because they want to take a look at the defense and get an idea of what they need to run against them. Chang will take the snap. Here comes the late pressure and the throw. And it was in the outstretched arms of Cochran, but he could not hang on. Cameron Worrell was coming on the blitz. Again, a blitz takes a long time to get there. If I understand you're disguising him, but it takes so much time as opposed to lining you up in line well, of scrimmage. Yeah, you do have to time your blitz out, but they're disguising coverages so they get a different look. But Thoreau Mitchell did pick up Laurel when he came in, so Chang had time to throw the ball. Mitchell is the best blocking running back, and in Hawaii's offense, that's the reason he's in the game. Not to run the football, but to block. Third and 14. Chang under some pressure from McIntyre. Lofts one! And could not connect with Clifton Herbert. Herbert had beaten his coverage. D. Mesa was there with him. Well, Timmy Chang is running around a lot more in the second half than he had to in the first half. And Fresno State has decided to heck with all this passive stuff. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to blitz. We're going to send guys after him. If Timmy Chang had had a little bit longer, he would have made this because D. Mesa really jumped this thing. D. Mesa gave up on this thing. He didn't believe it was going to be a deep ball. He guessed and he was wrong, and he got lucky. Matt McBriar is back to punt. We showed you earlier he leads the whack in punting, but not officially. He hasn't punted enough. And this one is blocked. It's blocked by D. Mesa, and he picks it up. Mesa into the end zone for a touchdown. Coming 
in Matt McBriar had one blocked punt in 101 punting opportunities in his career. And he just had a second career punt blocked. And it leads to six for Fresno State. It's a kick six. You block the kick, take it back for a touchdown. D. Mesa, he's got to be winded. He was just covering on a deep ball and then blocks the kick and gets the kick six six out of it. Will shift. Asperuha will set up for the extra point. Bit of a high snap, but it's brought down nicely by Jason Simpson, who was holding. Fresno State now has scored 14 points in the last minute, eight seconds. And there's McBriar. Again, we told you, he just hasn't had an opportunity to punt enough. You have to average three punts per game, and he hasn't. Well, here you go. He's to the outside, and on the inside is Marquet Davis. Now, you've got to make a choice as the blocker. Which one do you take? You always take the guy inside. He didn't do a great job on either one, and then Mesa still gets there from the outside. But you always take away the most dangerous guy, the inside guy. Mesa came off hard from the corner, very tight, great job, lays out, gets the block, and the touchdown. And Fresno State doesn't get the attention, you know, say Virginia Tech does for yep. special teams and blocks, but certainly they have had their share in the six years under Pat Hill. They got a little something going out here with the block kicks. McBriar, the Aussie, who is on the Ray Guy watch list, watch that last punt get blocked. That's Peru Alba kick it away. John West from the goal line. Picking and choosing his hole, staying on his feet, trying to make something out of nothing. And he is dropped at the 35. And if not for that tackle by DeAndre Gilbert on special teams, he would add a big chunk more. He was one step away from breaking that thing. Where would he have taken that to, Rod? You want to tell me something? Your house, my house, the house? I thought you were going to say it was going to be, you know, Rob Don. <laughs> Part of Part the of God Network. Network. <laughs> I thought that's where you were going, but hey, that's usually the Reese Davis deal. Mm -hmm. Don't want to steal any of his thunder. You've got a lot of it, though. A lot of thunder back there. Here's Chang now. After that sudden change shot, able to complete Ilawa across midfield to the 45 it's a gain of 20 and let's go down to heather well steve you guys are talking about just how important this game is for fresno state especially for bowl implications this is the most animated i have ever seen this coaching staff pat hill went over to the defense and said it's turnover time then the d-line coach carrie laughlin went over and said hey it is locked down time they're emphasizing don't let up because don't forget guys this is a hawaii team that scored 22 points in the fourth quarter against the bulldogs a year ago that was in like a seven minute span, Heather. They are simply explosive. Pat Hill told us, hey, you know, if this is a 14 point game, don't go anywhere. They can snap back and score at any time. It's Justin Kohler trying to wear out that sideline. Forced out in a big way at about the 20 by Mesa after the gain of 24. Yeah, the difference between the receivers for Hawaii and Fresno State is what they do after they catch the ball. The rack, run after the catch. Watch this here. Colbert, move, miss tackle, he's off. That's another 15 yards you get. You don't normally see that out of Fresno State. You see it all the time out of Hawaii. Justin Colbert made his 32nd consecutive start tonight. Leads all the offensive players in that department for Hawaii. Put a big game catch in the football as well. And that pass, I'm going to say no. He was out of bounds when he caught it. They try to go back to Colbert. Well, how about Nick Burley dropping in the zone blitz, getting underneath that throw? And I think Timmy Chang looked up, and he had to get the ball a little higher than he expected because all of a sudden there was a defensive lineman in the person of Nick Burley at 6'4", 250, that he had to get the ball over. We told Burley is playing with a right shoulder sprain. As if his thumb wasn't painful enough. But he's balanced now. You got the right shoulder sprain, <laughs> the bad thumb. You know, now you, you think about something else. You're ready to go right side, left side. You're good. Second down and ten. Easy for us to say up here. 
They get it away. We had one second left on our clock, on the play clock. To the Before motion the penalty. ball is snapped, false start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Rod, I, I mean it. All the penalties that Fresno State were getting, it, it's totally on the other side now. Well, but remember what Heather told us earlier about the crowd noise. It's been real tough down there. We're seeing a lot more false starts. They're taking longer to get their plays called, and it's probably because of the crowd down there. A hostile environment. That's part of the reason Hawaii didn't come straight here to Fresno to practice. These fans even make show up to make some noise when the opposing team comes in the day before to work out. Here's Chang. Good protection. Throws. And it is knocked away. Britton Komine looked like he had it. Chang put it in there. Bryce McGill was on the coverage. Did he get his arm in there or was it a drop? I think it was a drop. You cannot throw a ball any better than that. Watch Timmy Chang hang in here. He's got time. Watch him hang, and he's going to throw a frozen rope right on the money. Look at this. That's six. That's a drop. You've got to catch that ball. That's pretty good coverage by McGill as well. Yeah, he's playing man on. He's got him. He's got nobody else. Now, look at this. This is right there. you got to catch that. You've got to make that play. McGill's a big boy to be running around with wide receivers. Pretty good coverage. Here's Chang. Slips down, and that is taken down by Garrett McIntyre. The true freshman. And Steve, the noise level has really gone up here. And we talked about Fresno State having to get some more pressure on Timmy Chang. They've turned it up anytime you see Hawaii get close to the red zone. They've brought the pressure. More blitzes, more guys coming off the corner. This will be a 50-yard field goal attempt for Justin Ayat. He is already hit from 50 tonight. This one is low. And no. Comes up short. He's hit from 50, and now he has missed from 50. And that keeps the score 21-9. And Fresno State will take over with some fine field position. But you see how explosive Hawaii can be. But for that drop ball by Khomeini, they've got six points. They got down the field in a hurry there. And Pat Hill knows it. He knows he doesn't have enough points right now to win this game. Kinniger will look to do something about that. First down and 10 from the 33. Hand off to Rodney Davis. Trying to use the speed to turn the corner. Gain a two on the play. Pisa Tinoa Samoa made the stop. Yeah, I want to go back to something you brought up a long time ago. We didn't get a chance to finish, and, and that's the Barry Bonds thing. You Here knew I'd get back to it on it. That and pass interference. Go ahead, Rod. <laughs> There's something wrong with that. Yep. I mean, you got the greatest player in the game on the biggest stage, and he's not allowed to participate. Eight official at bats in the first four games. As a fan, I was upset. Yeah, game four when we were there, Pat Bell, you'd watch him walk three times. The first two to load the bases with one out. Simply amazing. Adam Jennings has the football. And he's out to the 40-yard line. It's a gain of four. There's something wrong with that. It's like, it's like the old days in college basketball right. when there was no shot clock. You could just stall keep away. and hold it. Yeah, keep away. You know, why, why pay to go see Barry Bonds if you can't see him? You know, from a fan, I understand, Rob, but it is a team sport. It's not an individual sport. Or if you don't let one guy beat you, make Benito Santiago beat you. It's about competition. You, got, you know, compete. I Bring don't your disagree, best. but how do you police something like that? How would you how would you say you have to pitch to it? I don't know that you can police it. I think you hope that everybody feels like they want to compete at the highest level and see if they can win. But the Angels feel like they want to win regardless of how they do it. Duncan Reed across midfield. Speaking of pro sports, Sunday night, NFL action for you. It's the Indianapolis Colts, 4-2. and two. What's your take on the AFC South, Rod? They'll be in Washington to take on the Redskins. You know what? On a serious note, this game in Washington, that's an area that needs something to cheer about. Yeah. They had a little something to cheer about yesterday. That was the great news. But now they need some more good feelings to uh, wash that area. Chance to get back to some normalcy and get everybody back to living again in the D.C. area. That's one reason to root for the Redskins, whether you like the team or not. Rodney Davis is bumped back just a bit. Loss of three on the play. Travis LeBoy made the stop. 
Oh, the boy has figured big time in this game tonight. He he shows up in a hurry. He's got what you call that suddenness about him. Sudden impact. I mean, when he comes to play, he hits you big time. He gets there in a hurry and delivers a blow. LeBoy leads the team with 11 quarterback hurries. That's more than twice as many as any teammate. How's that Hawaii running game look, the Yeah, look right. Like the big zero. Kusa. Screen pass to Davis. And he's across midfield. Limitian made the stop after the gain of five. Well, June Jones wants his offense back on the field. You know, we talked to him the other day, and he sounded very much like Steve Spurrier. He says, hey, we like for our defense to be aggressive, to take chances, get the ball back, get us on the field. He doesn't like watching his defense out there. He wants that man, Timmy Chang, back out on the field. Kevin Lemper, the defensive coordinator, said that is his whole objective. Their whole focus is to get the ball back to put it in the Chang's hands. Third down and seven upcoming. Here's a chance for the defense to make a big play. Pressure up the middle. Pinniger's not going to get out of there. He's dropped all the way back at the 43 by Kiani Alapa, his second sack of the game. Well, that's just what we're talking about. Take the chance. You want the ball back third down, bring it on inside. Bring your guys in there. Make sure that you get it done. Stunt, nice job. Pinniger didn't read it. They didn't change their protection scheme to make sure they picked up the blitz. Omar Bennett is standing at his own 15. Here's Simpson, who again has been one of the stars for Fresno State. Gets it away. Bennett nearly creamed at the 12. Special team stop by Tyrone Culver. Nearly got a big, big piece of Mets, a 40 yard punt. Last year, it was a wild game. Heather talked about it a little bit. David Carr, the touchdown pass to Charles Smith. Ashley Lillet, remember him? He had a couple of big touchdown catches. They had a big hit on Carr, forced a fumble. And then Nick Rolovich, who was playing quarterback with Chang injured, hit Lillet. 14-yard touchdown pass with 13 seconds left. Two of the last three meetings have come down to the final seconds. This has all the makings of that game, Rob. Absolutely. Hand off to Michael Bass. Gain of four. This is the fifth drive Hawaii has started inside their own 20. And the field position battle not being won by the Warriors. Yeah, that's true. And they're going to have to have big plays like you saw in that package with Ashley Lalee making big plays. Their wide receivers can do that. Regardless of whether they were walk-ons or not. That's a lot of yardage to cover. Nice to be back in front of... Uh, Green grass, Rod, huh? <laughs> I'm still working on my contact lenses. <laughs> was that really blue last it was, week? It was real blue. It was really blue for Fresno State. Chang, little dump off. Somehow Mitchell got away from the first would-be tackler and is able to pick up six on the play. And it will be a first down for Hawaii. Mark Daly made the tackle, but not before they were able to move the chains. Coming up on the final half minute of the third quarter. Fresno State, a 21-9 lead. Again, Pat Hill, 27-4 at home. In the conference at home, he's 20-2. Hawaii trying to take a bite out of that record. Little shovel pass from Chang, got it away, but Nothing will come from it. Mitchell on the receiving end. Well, that was the first time they've run that play all game. And it's a big part of their offense. A little shovel pass. But they'll head to the fourth quarter, Stephen. They will have to find a way to get the ball down the field. They still haven't come up with the big plays. Overshot some guys and dropped some key passes. Big play so far belong to Fresno State. Pinnaker there to Marquette Davis. And with the special team, Dean Mesa, not only the block, but the touchdown. Big by the Cox College Football Friday night on ESPN2. Fresno State begins the fourth quarter with a 21-9 lead over Hawaii. With Jimmy Chang. And the Warriors, they've got the football, and they are explosive. The number two pass offense in the nation, and they come out firing, and they come out completing. Britain, Co Britain Committee able to come up with the play to open up quarter number four. And again, 
down 21 to 9. You will not see any panic on that Hawaii sideline. If any team can come back in the nation explosive, it will be the Warriors. Well, June Jones, you know, he believes in the run and shoot. He's a, a Miles Davis protege who established that thing, but he has a Jerry Glanville influence from motivating his players. I'm sure he's using a little bit of that in this fourth quarter to remind them that, hey, they did this last year. Third down and three. Chang. The quick drop and the throw. It's Ilawa on the far side. First down and then some. Gain of 13. And Nate Ilawa made a nice catch. Nice hands out there. Timmy Chang had to throw that hard to stick it in there. And he had a nice job. Nice touch with the hands. You know, we were talking about the Washington, D.C. area. Ilawa is from that area, from Stafford, Virginia. And he was the Washington Post High School Player of the Year as a senior. So I'm sure certainly he can relate. Well, the catch was even more impressive because he's been playing with a bad shoulder. He had to get his hands up there and make a nice catch, and he did it. First down and 10. Three to get it off, and they do. Here's Chang. Steps up, lost one down the middle of the field, wide open is Colbert. Down the sideline, touchdown. Chang to Colbert for 58 yards in the score. Talk about explosive. It can happen quickly in this offense. And that's the reason there is no panic on the Hawaii sideline. And some Warrior fans made the trip to Fresno, California. Uh, Colbert was working against Nate Ray. Got him turned around, and Timmy, Timmy Chang read it perfectly and just laid it out there to give him a chance to run to it. Justin Ayat, for the first time tonight, will attempt an extra point, and it will be good. Justin Colbert, the fifth leading receiver in school history, has the first touchdown of the night for the Warriors. We're early in the fourth, and we're in a five-point game. Taco Bell's grilled steak taco tastes so authentic. night for the ESPN family. A little NBA preseason action tonight. And everybody at the Worldwide Leader in Sports just thrilled about playing with the NBA. Marquette Davis on the kick return. And it's a 31-yard return. Back See, to the touchdown. Yeah, let, let's watch out here. Here's Colbert right here. He's going to run an inside route, and there's an outside route that comes behind it. That's going to confuse the secondary. They're playing kind of a combo coverage. You see Ray inside, thinks about the outside route. Not good. Colbert goes inside to the post on him, and Chang does a great job of just laying it out there and letting Colbert run to it. Chang just 9-10, and 10, his record as a starter, looking to even that here tonight. Fresno, California. Rodney Davis with the turn of the corner, gets some yards, won't stop the clock because he's bumped out of bounds in a big way. And we bump it back to Reese. All right, Steve, we've seen from De La Salle setting up a touchdown in the special teams. We've seen him set up on defense, and again, special teams going to work. In addition to a great offensive night for Maurice Drew, he now is going to turn in a 74-yard punt return to go with it. Breaking tackle, strong running, and De La Salle in control, going for their 132nd straight win. Simply amazing, Reese. Yeah, Drew goes at about 5'9", 185, 190, kind of solid, built guy. He can really run. So too can Rodney Davis, although not there. No gain on the play. Isaac Sopa Anga made the stop. You know how long it's been since De La Salle lost the game, Rod? You got to go back to December of 91. Mark May was with the Chargers at that point. <laughs> San Diego was 3-10 and ten at the time. Oh, oh, oh. oh, you're killing him. And lost the next day in overtime to the Chiefs. I believe Mark was flagged for holding a number of times in that game. Mark never held once <laughs> in his life. Come on. Third down and four upcoming. <laughs> and a timeout has been Hawaii. taken by This is their first charge. Timeout. First timeout. They'll have two remaining. We've got 12.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. Bulldogs by five. Be raw in bed. Boom. Step in and out of the group. Colbert, receiver on the touchdown. It's a five-point game. June Johnson is fourth year as head coach 
of Hawaii. In his first season there, he led them to the biggest turnaround in NCAA history. He inherited a team that lost 18 straight games. He took over in 99, they went nine and four. This is third and four. A bad play action attempt. And the pass is complete. Duncan Reed trying to hang on. Hawaii saying he didn't catch it. The officials say he did. Keith Bonafa able to make the stop. He was right with him after the gain of 14. Well, and Pinnaker got rid of that ball quickly. I mean, I think that was a that was as quick a release as I've seen from him in the times that we've seen him this season. I mean, that thing got out of there in a hurry when he decided to let it go. Decision, bam, ball's out. First and ten there across midfield. More important to get points here, Rod, I understand, but nearly as important as take some time off that clock and a time-consuming drive, and that will help Rodney Davis. No gain on the play. Pisa Tino Samoa made the stop. Well, you want to keep your defense off the field for a little bit if you're Fresno State because it's like a fighter. You know, you get stunned by a punch. They got stunned by a big throw there, and so you want to give them some time to kind of regroup and go, okay, all right, hey, my bad, I made that mistake. Yeah, I missed this one, okay, instead of just rushing back out there. So you want to take a little time off the clock, get your defense rested, and then let them get back out there. On second and 11, Pinnegan set up pretty nicely to Duncan Reed. And he was down at the 39-yard line. Hiram Peters made the stop. It's a gain of eight. Tina Samoa came with the good pressure for Hawaii. Yeah, I, I think, though, Peters was probably thinking a little bit about, about that stinger because he didn't take the shot of the big hit. And, and Peters is a, is a guy who will give you the big hit. But with that stinger that has bothered him a little bit, he probably didn't think he wanted to stick his nose in there big time and maybe take himself out of the ballgame. Third and four. Hawaii crowd the line of scrimmage. Some pressure again. Little dump off to Greco. He's wrapped up. Gain of one. Shy of the first down. Peters swung him around that time. A heck of a play. Now, decision time for Pat Hill. You've pooch punted before. Your punter's done a great job with it. Do you want to do that again and stick them back there? Or do you think you need to get a first down here? I think the way my punter's been kicking, I think I pooch punted here. Jason Simpson is on the field. Simpson was a first-team all-whack player. Last year he was 18th in the country in punting. Comes into this one 50th in the nation, but has had an outstanding game. And it'll look to angle that one. And it will be down. Did he do it again? again. He did! Jason Simpson having some kind of ball game, and Hawaii will be forced to start at the two. Adam Jennings got down there. Again, only a 39-yard yeah. punt. It's perfect. Perfect. 60-yard punts sound great, but no. Yeah, and that's that was his job. He was sent out there to do that. His confidence had to be at a high level. He had done it twice before. He comes with it this time. Watch him just take a little bit off and just deaden this thing. Huh? You know, effortlessly. Get it up there. Don't turn it over. Get it up and just let it roll. Look at that. Great result. Third time in the game, Hawaii will start inside their five. Rod, sixth time, they'll start inside their 20. Jason Simpson, the Sporting News, had him ranked as the ninth best punter in the nation. Be the best punter on this college football weekend. And Chang overthrew everyone by about 20 yards. Flags fly, we'll send it back to Reese. I'm going to say the winning streak lives on in our high school showcase. De La Salle against Freedom. It's already 29 to 7. Everybody looking for Maurice Drew. Instead, they get Jackie Bates. De La Salle, 132 and counting, 36 7 in the third. I'm telling you, start looking for the number two teams, roll them through there. Can't put, can't put Long Beach Poly on the list. Why not? Because they got them this year, and they got them last year All right. when they were number two. So you got to find another number two to challenge De La Salle. Another number two. Yeah. And like I said, this week, that'd be Parkview. We saw Parkview. We had them as a showcase. That's right. So bring them on. <laughs> schedule. Let's see if we can change the schedule for next week, Rod. <laughs> Parkview. Alter their schedule. Just Made for TV matches. Yes. I hope it never comes to existence in the high school. Here's Chang to throw. Lofts this one. That was had trouble written all over it. 
Nathan Eloa was in the neighborhood, and so too was Alon Dials. We want to send out a big hello to the inspectors of the sky, the 606th Air Control Squadron at Spangdalem Air Base in Germany, watching the game on the American Forces Network. And we say it over and over again, and we mean it more each and every time. Thank you for all that you do. Second and ten. Pressure for Chang. Dumps it off to the right to Ferro Mitchell. And he is swung around for no gain. Alon Dials made the play. That's a great tackle because Mitchell is supposed to beat him. That play is designed for Mitchell to make Dials miss. You get him in one-on-one -on -one in space, Mitchell's got to make him miss. Dials wouldn't let it happen. Rod, what's your take on the corners for Fresno State? They've been banged up. They didn't play well last week. They're rotating six guys through. How they fared so far tonight? Gutsy. They bounced back from the big plays they've given up. You know, I think they played very well. They were challenged this week to step up, and they performed all right tonight. Chang's missed a couple of big plays a few times tonight. Here's another big play across the middle, right between the one and the eight of Justin Colbert. First down and more, trying to pick up some blocks, and he's out to the 43-yard line. It's a gain of 30, and Justin Colbert is having himself a half, and it still has 9.21 left in it. Hey, this is the way he used to do it at A.B. Miller High School back in Fontana. Everybody back there knows about this. He's got quickness, about 4-4 four, four speed, toughness, and he makes big catches. Here's Chang. Tip one to the house earlier tonight. This one was got to lie right back in the ballgame. And he turned on the Jets at the end there just to show you a little taste of what he has. Colbert has a career high tonight, 174 yards. June Jones said this guy is going to play on Sundays. Didn't say the NFL, maybe the CFL or arena ball. But he'll be picking up a pro paycheck. There's Colbert again. It'll be dropped back, pushed back across midfield by Tyrone Culver. Culver's one of those guys, Rod, is really a free safety. But they're going to take a look at him at the cornerback spot tonight because they need some extra corners against these guys. He gained 12. They're going to have to find any number of corners to deal with Colbert. I mean, Colbert has kind of kind of putting on a clinic in the second half here. We've seen him run the post pattern. He's gone across the middle. He's taken shots. He's made fingertip catches. He's caught it in, in traffic. He's showing you pretty much everything, including running with the ball after the catch. Colbert has six career 100-yard receiving games, three in a row, the last three games, including this one. And that wouldn't even be close. Prior to the snap, Claude Sanders was on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That wasn't even, didn't even try to hide that, Rod. I, I think Pat Hill's going to pull out that list and start looking for officials' names again and say, hey, buddy, what about that guy? He's been working the officials all night. Seems as if they've gotten fewer penalties called on them in the second half than in the first. Eight penalties against Fresno State in the first half. Four seats them. On first and five, Chang going to face some pressure. Going to throw in the face of the pressure, and it is knocked away. Jeremiah Cochran tried to split through a couple of offenders and could not come up with it. Dials was one of the players there for Fresno State. Some good pressure by Sanders that time he started on side. Uh, but, you know, it starts with protection. And you don't get it here. They tried to cut one of the defenders. I think it was Claude Sanders they tried to cut, and they didn't get him down. If they had cut Sanders, Timmy Chang would have had a little bit more time to really groove this thing. But that's you got to make that catch. That's a drop, too. Yeah. Right through the... Not a drop. Yeah. I don't think he ever had his hands on it. So it's no. tough to call that a drop. Right through the hands. Chang, six of eight. For 122 yards here in the fourth quarter, should have better numbers than that. That'll go as an incomplete pass, and all of a sudden, That's a football drop. looks like a hot potato. Yeah, that was Hawaii. Col Colbert dropped that one, and he's catching everything, and he dropped that one. But Timmy Chang, I mean, how on target has he been tonight? Last week, 34 of 49, 403 yards passing, and four scores. As a sophomore, he is already. The number one passer in school history and tops in total offense. Third down and five. And there's.
there's a player who hangs on to the football. It's Jeremiah Cochran. They go right back to him. Culver bumped him out, but not until he had 29 yards. And again, that throw was exactly right on. I tell you, he's been laser-like. And this thing is right where it has to be. He sees it right now. Right now, he knows he's got the matchup he wants, undialed, and he puts the ball right over his head. Look at this thing. He sticks it right in there before you can have help come over from the safety, Tyrone Culver. Rod, to me, Chang hasn't shown a lot of gun or arm strength, but unbelievable touch. Seems like there's a lot of air and great touch on his ball. Yeah, uh, he's, uh, he's gunned it up a couple of times on a couple of bullets that we saw over the middle. But no, we haven't seen him launch one 55 yards. But when he has lofted it up, it has landed in the right spot. Here's Chang bouncing around the pocket. I think really threw that one away. Again, down by five, 7.44 to play here in the fourth quarter. And these games are always good, not just on Friday nights on ESPN or ESPN2. We mean Hawaii and Fresno State. This is a typical Hawaii-Fresno State finish. They play them close every year. Yeah, and last year was so dramatic. Ashley Lilly making great catches in the end zone, dominating very much the way Colbert is dominating the second half as a receiver tonight. Chang's put it up 50 times tonight, off tonight. Was intercepted earlier, but it was wiped out because of a penalty prior to the half. Chang on the run, throwing and completing. A flag goes down. The ball is caught by Iloa at the nine-yard line. Steve, keep in mind, this is a group of receivers for Hawaii operating without Chad Owens. And Chad Owens is, is not here. Didn't even dress, didn't make the trip. Went down with a sprained right knee soon after catching a 50-yard touchdown pass against Nevada. He'll likely missed two more games, Rod. He was the second leading receiver in the whole conference when he went down. Oh! Pass interference call on Hawaii. Offensive pass interference. Wow, what's your take on that, Rod? Hey, it's about time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> pass interference. Offense. 15 yards. Good call. Yeah. You know, he he actually could have flagged him for the hands to the face. Shot to the face, sure. The rare offensive pass interference. But from that replay, as you saw, well deserved. Well, the bad thing about it, if you're Hawaii, is that it takes you pretty much out of field goal range. I mean, it puts you in a very, very difficult spot for that. You're, you're looking at a long field goal if you don't get things back here. Second and 25. So they can actually get a first down. They're at the 26. Here's Chang. Set up the screen. Able to complete to John West. And he is slammed down at the 25. So it's a gain of one. Not even close to getting first down. James Sanders was the first player there to hit him. Your comment about arm strength, that's a good example of it there. Because that ball's got to get there sooner so that West has a chance to make a move. You know, he's set up to get knocked down unless that ball gets there faster. That's about the only thing I don't think I've seen Timmy Chang do very well. I don't think he's thrown that particular pass very well tonight. De La Salle on their way, as you saw, 46 to 7. And you would think that's the easiest pass to make, a little set up the screen. He's, right. he's made the more difficult passes tonight. He's still trailing by five. Time out, Hawaii. Now there's an easier way to see the world. Visit orbits.com. The entire frigid conditions here in Fresno, California. <laughs> it's a whole 57 degrees, Rod. Right? Hey. He's got a knit hat on. What is by 80 degrees, Come 85 on. in Hawaii? <laughs> Heck, you're in shorts. Third down and 24. Tenth play of the drive is upcoming. Again, they start at their own two. They got to come out of this thing with some points. They at least have to get three. Here's Chang. Steps up, throws, lost one. There it is. Intercepted. It's Tyrone Culver. Going to bring it to the 25 and the 30 before he steps out of bounds. And that's something the Fresno State coaches wanted to watch for because of his pinky, his wrist. The ball may be sailing on Chang sometimes, and that time it clearly did sail. There's Dan Brown, the defense quitter, who said that's something they were hoping to capitalize on. Well, they did. And sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Timmy Chang should not have thrown this ball. You want to ensure the three points here. He's trying to get it all. He forces it into coverage, and this is not like him. 
He felt a little bit of pressure. He got greedy. He wanted the seven points. He didn't have it. He should have thrown it away and taken the three points. And there is your first interception of the night for Chang. It's a three-yard gain, and Rodney Davis and the Bulldogs try to bleed some clock here. They put themselves in a tough situation. Hawaii's already used two of their timeouts, yep. Rod. Yes, They're still they, down five. Yeah, they have, but they, they can move the ball and score quickly, but they, they've got one timeout. But the thing that they have to do now is refocus. I mean, Timmy Chang has to let that throw go because if they hold them 21-16, even with one timeout, if they got two or three minutes, they are in fine shape for moving down the field. They can move it pretty quickly. Tyrone Culver makes the big pick. Although he is the... Looked like the intended target on that play. Pinnaker is pressured and taken down. Pisa Tinoa Soma able to come up with the sack. As we look at the ESPN2 game track, Fresno State really on that third quarter. Big plays, including on the special teams. Yeah, Marquis Davis coming up with the catch. And then D. Meza blocking the kick. Kick six for him. But then you get Colbert coming back with a big catch, showing you his speed. Getting my getting a Hawaii right back in this thing at 21-16, right before the Timmy Chang pick. Duncan Reed has come out. The tight end looked like he was injured on the play. Well, you know, we talked about the Hawaii defense and how they gamble. And they say, hey, we want to get the ball back for Timmy Chang. They gambled, they got a blitz now, a big third down for them. Third down and 13 for Pinniger. Looking down the sideline, and it is intercepted. It's Kevin Milhouse. And Milhouse will spin out of a tackle and just shy of midfield. Kevin, Kelvin Milhouse from Santa Ana, California, comes up with the play, the junior. And it looked like it was in and out of Davis' hands and then into Milhouse's hands. Well, Milhouse has great position. Davis was never open. He's looking in his eyes. He sees it. Perfect coverage. And he fights back for the ball. That's a great job. That ball was a little bit underthrown. He slowed up enough to play it well. See him free? He just slows up enough to play it. Davis tried to slow up and jump and get it before it came down. So we're trading picks with one play in between. That's great man-to-man -man coverage. First down and 10, just shy of midfield. Chang gets to get right back out there. And he comes up firing. He nearly was intercepted again. All of a sudden, some poor passing by both quarterbacks, and it falls an incomplete pass. College football Saturday for you coming up tomorrow. The showdown Saturday in the Big Ten as Iowa against Michigan, two of the three undefeated teams. Ohio State will be the other one. And the Buckeyes, by the way, don't play Iowa on the schedule. And the primetime game has Alabama and Tennessee. The balls come in ranked 15th in the nation. They have beaten Bama seven straight times. Helmet game. Helmet game. Second down and 10 now. Chang throwing, and that time completing. And Cochran across midfield out to the 41 or so. It'll be a first down. And that's why the clock is stopped. Now, remember, we've seen a couple of bad passes by Timmy Chang. Remember, they don't call audibles. I mean, Timmy Chang will run the play that June Jones called. So he's thrown the ball into coverage a couple times because that was the play that was called. And he doesn't change it, doesn't have really the freedom to change it. They go ahead and run what they're going to run. This is Chang's first real feel of Fresno. He sat out in 2000 as a true freshman. He had a concussion when they played here. And he missed a 45-27 loss. <laughs> First down, as we predicted moments ago. And the clock will wind down. Well, again, if you're Timmy Chang now, you have to remember the bad pass only for the purpose of knowing you don't want to force it when you don't have it. Three receivers to the left for Chang. Bottom of your speed. Steps up. Throws it softly and completes it. Another first down. That time it's Britton Comine. And we send it down to Heather Cox. Fresno's defensive coordinator Dan Brown emphasized to the defense as they took the field, you've got to put pressure on the quarterback early. Make him throw early in the option reads. He feels that if they can get the ball out of his hands early, they have a much better chance of getting another pick in this series. 
Brown's defense certainly up against it, Heather, and have to give it up a 67. He looked back, he said, remember that Oregon State disaster? They lost 59-19 to them. And they came back the following week to win at Rice, although barely, they won by three. Looking to rebound right here. Chang dumps it off across the middle into heavy traffic, and it's a catch. Again, it's Kamine, and it's a gain of 10. Well, Dan Brown's guys are getting a good push. And Jason Stewart that time was coming up the middle, and I thought they were going to throw a holding uh, flag that time because he came up inside, and it just looked like he just got manhandled. And something to keep our eye on here as to whether they keep coming with that pressure and if they've complained to the officials about it because Stewart really, I thought, got held in that last play. Chang already having a career night, 443 yards passing. And there's still four minutes to go. He'll add to his total here. Quick little dump off. The pick up three on the play. Neil Gossett getting some action. And he comes up with his first grab of the game. It's a much stronger effort from the Fresno State defense tonight than we had out of them last week. And, and 688 yards allowed last week to Boise. All of those yards that you saw, they're all passing yards. Yes, yeah, but you know, their tempo's been better. You know, they tackle better, they play with more energy. It's Colbert. Tried to cut back inside. It was a bit of an exaggeration. All but four of the yards <laughs> That's that, all. that Hawaii has picked up tonight. That's okay. You can go with that. It's almost in, almost via the air. <laughs> so the pass defense numbers for Fresno State is going to take a bit of a beating. Yeah, but remember, this is an offense that scores 42 points a game. They only have 16 tonight. So the Fresno State defense has really done their job. Almost no matter what, right. which way this turns out, They've, you know, held them to well below half their average. Hawaii, the fifth highest scoring team in the nation. Averaging 42 points a game. Looking to pick up some points here. And it'll go as an incomplete pass. Kamine couldn't come up with it. Cameron Worrell was there. Uh, Worrell just drives on this thing. He is thinking balls over the middle. If you saw him, he started attacking the middle even before Timmy Chang threw that ball. Cameron Worrell was thinking about getting the pick. He read his eyes, and he came right away. Hawaii has spent their final timeout. Interesting times to use all three timeouts, still with 2.30 left. Yeah, yeah. I'm on a 10 o'clock flight. Business trip, huh? Remember, you can achieve success anywhere. Just in time, you welcome you back to fourth down. Maybe the ball game on the line. Hawaii has no timeouts remaining. Two and a half to play. This is fourth and four at the 13 of Fresno State. Chang will throw for the 60th time tonight. And caught. Touchdown. Making it look easy was Britton Kamine. And just like that, Hawaii has taken the lead. Well, see, that was why they burned the timeout. Fourth down, they knew they had to have the right play. And you go back to your chart of tendencies and figure out what are they likely to run defensively down here? What play do we have that matches up against this? And also, now you think about what do you do? One point, two points. Fourth quarter, you're up by one. Two-point lead does you no good. You might as well go ahead and go for two. That's the, that's the only choice here. You got to go for two. Well, that touchdown looked awful easy against a Bulldog defense that has played very well. So going for two, try to make it a three-point game. Here's Chang, will throw, and it is caught. Two-point conversion is good. Kamine has got the touchdown, and he's got the two-point conversion. 2.25 left here in the fourth. Hawaii by three, and Fresno State does have all three timeouts remaining. Don't go anywhere. College football Friday night comes back with a fantastic finish from Fresno, California after this. Up four in the East tonight. Hawaii a three-point lead with 2.25 left. Britton Kamine got his first start a couple of weeks ago. This is the guy who owns just about every high school record 
in Hawaii history. Short kickoff, and that's an interesting play. David Adamo, the middle linebacker, returns into the 44-yard line, and that's where Fresno State will start. Yeah, it's good field position. Let's watch it down here. There's Kamene right there. Looks like he's in single coverage with Bryce McGill. And then right there, they have contact, so everybody's thinking, oh, okay, this is a zone coverage. Let's find the soft spot. He does. Safety doesn't get over. Kamene's wide open. It looked like man coverage initially, but no, it was zone. Kamene got around it and found the soft spot in the middle of the field. First down and 10. Here's Pinnegar now. And was looking to go to Mark K. Davis and underthrew it. For Timmy Chang, he has career numbers tonight in terms of completions and yards, but you know what? Paul Pinnegar had a career game last week against Boise State, and nobody around these parts cares. So it's great when you have a career game if it comes in a win, and that is still to be determined for Hawaii. Well, I think he'll be pleased with it if they get the win, but also because he made good throws at crucial moments. You know, you care about quarterbacks who step up and get it done when you have to get it done, and that's on Pinnegar right now. Second down and 10 after the low pass went incomplete. Pressure on Pinnegar from the backside. Got it away and completes to DeAndre Gilbert. It's a forced first down. They're across midfield. Well, they are across midfield. It'll be shy of the first down. It's a nine-yard gain. Well, it goes back to the kick return you talked about, setting them up at the 44-yard line. They don't have a long field. They got a short field. And in addition to that, they only need a field goal to send it into overtime. Asin Asparuhov has not attempted a field goal tonight. His career long, by the way, is 52. Did it against Oregon State. First down and more. Rodney Davis inside the 35. A gain of 14. And they're closing in on Asparuhov territory. That's uh, a delicate balance for a coach right now. I mean, you want to win the ball game. You want to get the touchdown. But by the same token, you don't want to do something stupid that blows the chance of tying it. So you want Pinnegar to be smart with the football. You're almost there where you can guarantee kicking the field goal. You want to be smart handling the ball. Don't want to make ill-advised throws. And you want your running backs to cover it up on contact to avoid being stripped. You don't want to give the ball back to that Hawaii team. Even if you take the lead, you don't want to leave them any time. Zeros on the clock and a delay a game before the ball was snapped. Delay. Wow. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. And penalties have been an issue for Fresno State all night long. And this one is not a good one. They don't need to have the five yards move back. They don't have the same kind of offense that Hawaii has. I mean, they, they ground it out. They, they pop it to the tight end. They try to hit a big one down the field every now and then, but they just can't line up four and five right outs and get you going. Second time tonight they've been called for the layer game. They had four false starts mixed in amongst those 13 penalties. going to be another penalty. That ball bounded up in the air and brought down by D'Artagna Shaq, who's had an active game for the right guard. But again, a flag. Well, it was uh, Shaq who was holding on Travis LeBoy. Holding offense. Decline. Second down. Well, they declined the holding penalty because the ball was knocked down. And they still have them in a long yardage situation. They wanted to get the down, keep the downs moving, and the clock is still moving. The Fresno State has all three timeouts left. Second and 19. Swing it out quickly to DeAndre Gilbert. Gain of four on the play. He's pushed back to the 40. And see, Hiram Peters did not make the tackle, but he did a great job on that. He took away the outside and forced the ball to come back inside. Fresno State will spend one of those timeouts. 64 seconds left in regulation. B Raw in point game. 66 seconds left. And on some that I think can only hope to have as entertaining game as we've had here tonight on College Football Friday night. Maybe. The Colts and the Redskins. It all starts with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite, Chris Berman and Tom Jackson at 7.30 Eastern. Steve Spurrier's switch starting quarterbacks for the third time this season. Shane Matthews will go up against. The, but, but that's consistent. Absolutely. The old ball coach always does that. Just a different league, yeah. different level. 
Third and 15 now. From the 38. That's Baruha down the sideline. And it is intercepted. Kelvin Milhouse, his second interception of the game. And how do you like that play call? I don't. Wow, on a third down and 15, they go for six instead of going for the first down and field goal range. Well, they ran a wheel route. Milhouse picked it up, knew they were going deep, and then he baited Pinnaker. I mean, he didn't think Pinnaker would throw it, but he baited him to let it go. He's like, if you want to throw it, go ahead. I'm out here. And Pinnaker thinks he has enough arm to get it there, but McGill is there. Milhouse is right there on Jermaine Jameson. I mean, what Pinnaker saw, he saw Jameson a yard behind Milhouse, but Milhouse was baiting him. He was just gliding, hoping that he would throw the ball. Now they'll just try to run out the clock. Milhouse is a guy, a quarterback, the Hawaii coach has told us he's had his ups and downs, really been inconsistent. Well, he's rather consistent here in the fourth quarter. He led the team in interceptions last season. Hadn't had any coming into tonight. He's got a couple of picks in the fourth quarter now. And now Fresno State forced to use a timeout. Uh, it was a great play, and I have no doubt he baited Pinnegar on that. He could run and catch up, and he was trying to bait him to throw that ball. And he had it, he was all over. That's a great play. Now, on the other hand, I don't think it was a great call. I, I think that in that position, you got a chance. You got you got a chance to get closer, so you have a fourth down, and you can make the decision on fourth down whether you kick the field goal or you want to try and pick up the first down. Now, maybe the thinking I, I would believe would be that the Hawaii defense would be prepared for them to try to just get the first down. Oh, so dude. maybe you go for six, thinking they're going to think short to the intermediate pass. Oh, the old, that's just what they're expecting us to do. Could be. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Airplane. <laughs> Reference. You watch too many movies. 51 seconds. Well, but it was a typical Hawaii finish. This is the way these two teams play this game. It's always down to the final minute, and that man has got to be wondering about the bowl future for Fresno State. They're not out of the mix, but they didn't help themselves tonight. Fresno State, that at one point last season was ranked number eight in the country. Rob, they're going to fall to under 500. 500 in the conference, under 500 for the season. Not sure the reason for this delay. But what this does for Hawaii. Right, they're one win away from being bowl eligible yeah. after winning here tonight. Yeah. Now they... With five to play. Five to play, but they probably can't get anything done with winning the conference because of the way Boise State is rolling. Right. And they already lost to Boise State. But they'll be content with getting bowl eligible, running this thing out, and then being in Hawaii on Christmas Day for a bowl game. And pack that stadium, regardless of the opponent. Hawaii's last three games of the regular season will also be at home. Here's John West going to add to it. John West is breaking away. See you later. 81-yard touchdown. And this game will be much closer than the final score will indicate. Well, that's how you get your, your running game average up. You don't run the ball for 59 minutes, and then you break one off for 81 to finish off the game. 84 rushing yards for Hawaii tonight. 81 of them come on that run with 41 seconds left. And hey, who said they don't have a balanced attack? I hear you. <laughs> and the expression of Pat Hill. And you know, Rod, in a lot of respects, this game might be more of a difficult loss than the loss a week ago at Boise State. Yeah, and he had it going his way. He had he had the tempo. They were running the ball. They just gave up a couple of big pass plays late in the game. But the block punt yep. returned for a touchdown. Uh, D Mesa. This the game extra point is good. This game had Fresno State written all over it. Led 21 to 9 in the third quarter. And Hawaii, June Jones, is scared, staring at 31 on the school board. 41 seconds left. Fresno State's got one timeout. Well, might have been a helmet game for them. Remember you said they hadn't won here since 73? Well, they got that monkey off their back. Hawaii, 
coming to the mainland, getting it done. For those of you that need more and have to have more on this game, we urge you to tune over to ESPN News. We'll have some analysis and some post-game reaction. We'll post-game coverage on ESPN News here next on ESPN2, the Edge NFL matchup. Oh, what a performance by Timmy Chang. A couple of his receivers. And Justin Rod, Colbert. That 81-yard touchdown run is the longest in Hawaii school history. The previous high was 80. Charlie Smith did it to Oregon State in 1976. I doubt that they'll have another run that long this season. I doubt that they'll have 84 yards rushing in a game this season. A couple other players, including Anthony Thomas and Walt Goffigan also had 80-yard touchdown runs. But that run by John West is a school record. You know, you got to like this about June Jones, though. He says, hey, the game of football is supposed to be fun and entertaining. And you can run the ball all night long, and the fans won't enjoy it. So you want to get out there, throw it around, be exciting, and he has that style of play in Hawaii. It's nice to see him smile. Before, prior to last season, in a near-fatal car accident, he's gone through some tough times and is still dealing with a lot of pain and a lot of things he can't do that he'd like to do, like play a little bit better golf. But he can smile and enjoy this one. It is so difficult to come to Bulldog Stadium and win. Again, under Pat Hill, his record here in conference games at home, 20 and 2 coming into this game. It's going to be 20 and 3. Incomplete pass, 37 seconds left to play. Korea had some pressure there on Pinnegar. And the quarterback matchup. Again, Timmy Chang will feel a lot better about his career game. Look at those numbers for Chang. 60 attempts, 462, only picked off once officially. Well, I thought Pinnegar played very well in the third quarter. I, I felt like they opened it up for him a little bit. They got the receivers involved. Only the tough throw in the fourth quarter, that last pick, is what really people will remember, and that hurt them. But other than that, I think he played pretty well tonight. But Timmy Chang, just marvelous the way he just dropped balls in there when there didn't seem to be any room at all tonight. Chang really has put together four solid games. Struggled at BYU. Struggled against UTEP. Got a little bit better against SMU. Another son in autographs here in Fresno. <laughs> You took the Sharpie out of your sock, though, right? Tell me you took the Sharpie out of your sock. Yeah, I, I won't tell. That was a one-week deal. I, I, won't, I will not tell. And the Blue Boise turf. Four consecutive strong games. Good challenge. There's pinning around the run now. Now as the stadium empties out. And a terrific tackle at the 25-yard line by Kevin Jackson. Even in mop-up time, he's not going to let Pinnigan get a couple extra yards. Well, you have to you have to feel for Pat Hill. I mean, he put his team through it this week, and I think they responded, but it, they just didn't get the win. Fresno State will host Tulsa next week, and Hawaii will have another difficult game. Rather, Hawaii will play Fresno State, rather San Jose State of the part. Fresno State will move on as well. Hawaii comes up victorious. They are one win shy of being bowl eligible with five games left. And the final three games will be on their home field. And now Fresno State will really be up against it. Once again, the final score, Hawaii comes to Fresno State and wins 31-21. The Edge NFL matchup is next. For Rod Gilmore, Heather Cox, this is Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. Good night, everybody. Personnel, formation, and motion. Run the football factor back. We'll answer the question. The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial.
Forest. They call it running back by committee. A committee of five, that is. And together, they make up the ACC's most vaunted ground attack. Their leader, senior Terrence Williams, who rolled up 97 yards last week at Clemson. The North Carolina Air Attack suffered a setback last week with a thumb injury to the ACC's leading passer, Darian Durant. Backup C.J. Stevens may not have a lot of experience, but Sam Aiken does, and he's the league's most productive receiver. It's Wake Forest and North Carolina coming your way next. Touchdown, Florida State. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Hook and ladder. Hook and ladder. And the back takes the lead. Touchdown, Wake Forest. The morning fog is lifted away, revealing a beautiful mid-autumn day here in Winston-Salem and a perfect setting for Sitco's presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports ACC Football. The North Carolina Tar Heels come in visiting their Tobacco Road rivals, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Good afternoon, everybody. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker. It's hard to put a label on what Wake Forest does offensively. It's not the true wing bone, not a true option, but what it is, Doc, is very effective. Well, it really is. And it control, they control the offensive line. Those are 250 yards per game, and that's why they're number one in the ACC. And it all starts with that big offensive line. We can go on and on talking about the byproducts of those guys, great base blockers. Talk about running backs by committee. Take a look at it. I think I can pick up a few yards with this group. All of those five have at least 200 yards rushing thus far this season. They have 1,900 as a total. And, of course, Ovi Mahaley, their fullback, no carries last year, nine TDs. Well, he had a great spring, and his staff, they figured out, hey, this guy can help us and help them. He has done that. He's changed their offensive philosophy somewhat. North Carolina has to change things up because they're in turmoil over their quarterback. Darian Durant out. That means C.J. Stevens gets the call. His first career start. Oh, and Durant meant so much to the Tar Heel offense. If you look at their scoring, 17 to 21 of their touchdowns have gone in the air. Well, C.J. got a tough start last week, but you know what? He bounced back, showed some resilience, showed also that he could be a big-time player in the ACC. I like his release. And he's got some good players to throw to. You see Sam Aiken there. There's also Chesley Borders. So the cupboard is not empty at North Carolina. Well, they're on here at Winston-Salem. It's ACC football. The tailgaters in presence and the Demon Deacons do their walk through them all here at Grove Stadium in preparation for this afternoon's ACC showdown. The Tar Heels and the Demon Deacons next. Pint breakup. So you finally dumped him. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. During the Suzuki year end clearance, get zero down, zero percent financing for five years, and now for a limited time, you'll also get one thousand dollars customer cash for the best price all year on the hot new area. The XL7 SUV and every O2 model. Every Suzuki also comes with America's best warranty, making Suzuki America's best value. Hurry in before the Suzuki year end clearance is over. I love this river. One minute it's calm, predictable. The next, it's trying to throw you off for all it's worth. But that's life. You set your course, equip yourself the best you can, and find a good guide to show you the way. That's what a bank should be. A guide to show you the way. The color blue promotes peace of mind. It stands for strength and security. Blue also symbolizes trust and reliability. It's the color of loyalty, the color of dependability. So when it comes to health care, it's no wonder so many people choose blue. Care first, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Because in health care, there's only one color. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week is being brought to you by 
your neighborhood Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. By bb and branch banking and trust company. By Altel, are you connected? By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by Ice House. At Plank Road Brewery, we'll make the Ice House, you make the ads. For details, go to icehouse.com. The 99th meeting between these two Tobacco Road rivals about to get underway as the Demon Deacons take the field with a 4-4 record, taking on the Tar Heels at 2-5. Both are coming off second-half disappointments in their games last week. And with more on that development, bringing it into focus, the third member of our broadcast crew, Mike Hogwood. Thank you a lot, Steve. And I'll tell you what, you're right about one thing. It has turned into a gorgeous day here. And these guys hope it's still a pretty day in the third quarter because that has been a problem in the last couple of weeks for both teams. Wake Forest last week against Clemson had the lead, had the second in the nation in turnover margin. They'd only had five coming into the game. They had five turnovers in that game. McPherson had his first interception of the year. And then in the third quarter, we were in Charlottesville last week. We know what happened to North Carolina, including an injury to Darian Durant. He will not be available today, as you have said. And we will be back getting ready for the kickoff. It's North Carolina and Wake Forest from Winston-Salem next. Here at GEICO, we live, eat, and breathe car insurance. Occasionally, we do eat other foods. <laughs> we like to have a balanced diet. But uh, we wake up and we think about car insurance. We go to sleep and we think about car insurance. And we've got a lot of broken families to prove it. Now, that's just a little humor. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We like to think of ourselves as real, real extroverts and fun-loving people. Cooper Tire is proud to be the official sponsor of the ACC TV network. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. any Don Pablo's Mesquite Grill Fajita and receive a free movie card for one free movie rental at participating Blockbuster stores. Offer good while supplies last. This is the sign that sells. Craig Northrup and the Northrup team, Maryland's number one realtor. Take a virtual home tour at 1mdrealestate.com. Imagine home buyers visiting your home online. Let Maryland's number one real estate team work for you. The proof is in the numbers. The Northrop team sells a home every day. Ready to sell? You're right where you need to be. Craig Northrop and the Northrop team. Log on or call today. Mike Hogwood back on the sideline. C.J. Stevens will be the North Carolina quarterback today. That's because Darian Durant had surgery on the thumb. How hard is this for you, Darian? It's, it's real difficult. Uh, you know, you always dream about coming here. Uh, this is my first time here, and I wanted to, you know, come out here and play well in front of the home crowd. I know you had a talk with C.J. in the locker room just a minute ago. What'd you tell him? Just told him to overcome adversity. You know, everything is not going to be perfect. Just put bad plays behind you, and you'll be fine. All right, Darian Durant will be on the sidelines to support. C.J. Stevens today, Steve. Well, thank you very much, Mike. And uh, interesting comment. Darian Durant says the home crowd here in the state of North Carolina, but it's at uh, Wake Forest home field, but there's a lot of Tar Heel blue gathered around Grove Stadium this afternoon. Demon Deacons, of course, have won the coin toss. They have deferred their option of the second half. North Carolina will take the ball first. There's John Bunting. It's been a tough week for him as he's had to re-gear his offense to go around C.J. Stevens. And the shame of it really, Doc, is the fact that Darian Durant at the time of the injury was playing tremendously. Well, he's given him a chance to win in every ball game. He also, to compound the problems for Carolina, shuffles within the offensive line. 
Now these are these are players who have shown that they can play, but you know you always feel comfortable at your own position. That will be the case today. Matt Wisnowski, the sophomore from Morristown, New Jersey, will kick it off, and it is picked up by Wright, Wallace Wright of North Carolina. Here we turn it out to the 19-yard line, and that's where the Tar Heels will start first and 10. And bringing them out at quarterback, of course, C.J. Stevens. He is a junior transfer from the University of Florida. He played one down against Kentucky in the 2000 season. Last week against Virginia, 9 out of 15 once he got settled down, and a touchdown pass to Sam Aiken to finish off the day, and the Tar Heels came close to coming back from that deficit, but uh, they ran up a 21-0 count before falling to Virginia. They are first and 10 at their own 19. And off goes to Jock Lewis. And Lewis comes up to about to the 23-yard line, and he's brought down there by the Wake Forest defense. Let's take a look at our Chevy starting lineups. Chesley Borders, four TD, catches a great night against Arizona State. Lewis, Hedgecock, but we'll see Faison in there along with Sam Aiken and Zach Hilton. Up front, Jeb Terry was right guard. Now he's right tackle. Skip Seagraves, left tackle. Stephen Bell, Jason Brown, <laughs> and Kyle Ralph, who's a true freshman, getting his first start today. Here's Lewis on second down, and good yardage out to the 28-yard line, a gain of five. As we look at the Wake Forest defense now, it's a 3-5 alignment, really, and Calvin Pace is having a tremendous season. 16 tackles for loss. Monteith Sharp and Roderick Steven, the front three. The middle three, Jamie Scott used to be a running back, now a linebacker with Brad White and Kellen Brantley was four career interceptions. And, of course, Eric King leads the Wake Forest backfield defensive secondary with three interceptions. Williams, Bracey, Braxton, and Shaw join him. And Brace is a young man. We'll keep our eye on number eight. Third down and one for the Tar Heels. Jock Lewis, third straight carry, gets the first down up to the 33-yard line as the Tar Heels try to grind it out here on their first drive of the afternoon. Again, that offensive line, Seagraves, Bell, Brown, Ralph, and Terry. They, the key is to keep a pad on a pad. You know, no belly floppers. Just try to keep a good surface and give a good back a chance. Jock Lewis missed last week because of a cap injury, so he's shown some fresh legs. Well, the key problem here, Doc, is how well do these guys know each other, this offensive line, with all these changes? First and ten. Stevens out there, passes complete to Borders. And Borders still going, knocked out of bounds in Wake Forest territory at the 46-yard line. The beauty, Steve, is that these guys have been in the same meeting rooms, so they're familiar. I mean, they have a good feel. You know, they've had a chance to sit down and chow. That's how you get to know a guy. You break bread with him. Watch Stevens. Good setup. Fires the ball right on the money, and we always like you to see do something good with the ball afterwards. That's what Borders specializes. The CJ starting to feel it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you want. Confidence early. 22-yard hook up to Chesley Borders. First and 10, North Carolina at the Wake Forest 45. And off on the delay goes to Lewis. Bounces outside a block and is brought down by Quentin Williams and company at the Wake Forest 35-yard line where he's going to be very close to another North Carolina first down. Well, again, you need some luck, but you also need your wide receivers to block in the running game in order to make it work. Watching your screen, number five, Pollock right there. Hand might have been a little bit on the outside, but no. the effort is there. <laughs> it's just a little bit, but you got to have that. Sixth play of the drive, second down, very short. Three down here for the Tar Heels. Lewis runs head on into the middle of that Wake defense. I think that was Caron Bracey who put the huge hit on him at the line of scrimmage, but he still might have gotten the first down. Well, Bracey, I mean, he, here's a guy, and all he does is find the ball carriers. Ten tackles last week against the Tigers of Clemson. It's an unusual position, slash strong safety, slash linebacker. And watch him feel then lift, and then try to inflict pain. <laughs> That's the bottom line of the defense. First and 10, Tar Heels again at the Wake Forest 34. Play action, Stevens to throw, has time, has a man downfield. That's Aiken in the end zone. And covering on the play, Daryl Shaw, the junior from Bladenboro, North Carolina, makes the stop in the end zone. Last week, Aiken uh, took one right out of the defensive back's hand. Yeah, he did. And, you know, as a receiver, you are so happy that the quarterback and the staff believes in you. This is just throwing up, big fella. You go get it. And he almost pulls it off. And you watch on the end. 
Wake Forest has got to get some pressure on Stevens. Had some time there. And towards the end of that, they did get a little rat-a-tat-tat. Take my word for it. <laughs> Second down and 10. Orders in motion. Handoff now goes to man on Terry. And Terry was, uh, of course, a true freshman. Carries the pile ahead. And he is close to the, another first down. So North Carolina has been screaming all season. Can we get a ground game? Well, today in this first series, he seems to have discovered it. It gives you such stability. Ralph, the young freshman, as you watch, see the cluster you see all the white shirts? Those guys give you a chance. Big number 72 in there pounding at the end, Jason Brown. That's what you need as a running back. All you need is a little help from your buddies. Gets nine yards on the carry. Doc brings up third and one. North Carolina in favorable down in distance. All drive. Bracy looking for that one. And he is shot down there on the corner by Brad White, the sophomore from Portsmouth, Rhode Island. He's going to be close to a first down. He's got it. Mm -hmm. Chains keep on moving for North Carolina. Phase on the fullback, number 48. Again, young man. Out of Clinton, North Carolina, who has got some big shoes to, to fill the Madison Hedgecock, and Madison will be all over the place today. On trying the to defensive field, yep, trying yep. to fill gaps. That's right. First and ten. North Carolina still moving. Nice hole for Carey to get up to the 20, and he tripped on a play that could have probably produced a little more yardage. And making the tackle, Goriel Scales, redshirt freshman from here in Winston-Salem. Well, Wake Forest now they, they need to shoot a few gaps. They've got to probably gamble and try to create some havoc and get a tackle for a loss. Right now the heels just have they're in a, they're in a good flow now. You want to disrupt that if you're Wake Forest. Second down. About eight. Deep handoff carry. Big hole right side. And he holds on down to the 15 yard line. It'll be a pickup on the play of about five. Scott was the man who brought him down. And Jason Brown, 72 to center. I love this in zone. Nice block, the point of attack by Faison. Again, every time throughout this drive, Carolina backs have had a chance to get beyond the line of scrimmage unscathed. Doc, they marched 10, 11 plays now, 65 yards. In the red zone, our red roof red zone scoreboard on the car here. 55% touchdown rate. This play's not going far. Good play by Kellen Brantley, Calvin Pace, and also in on the play, Warren Braxton, sophomore from Madison Heights, Virginia. Wake Forest had that play pretty much solved. Throws it for no gain and brings up fourth down. Yeah, Lewis didn't read his, his blocks on that one. That time he knew he needed to really hug the double team. He bounced outside and there was nothing there but black dudes. Here's Dan Orner. Transfer from Michigan State. He hit three 50-yard field goals against Syracuse in his first ever game for the Tar Heels. This kick is up and it is no good. Only his second miss of the season, and it squanders a North Carolina drive of 12 plays, 65 yards. The Tar Heels come up empty. Wake Forest gets the ball when we come back. No score in Winston-Salem. Suzuki presents a look back at a previous ACC Heisman Trophy winner. This week, we remember the career of Florida State's Chris Winkie, the first three-year starter for Bobby Bowden. Winkie led the Seminoles to an undefeated national championship season in 2000. He threw for over 4,000 yards his senior year and compiled a 32-3 career record as a starter. Suzuki, proud presenting sponsor of the Heisman Trophy. Motel6.com now has special Click 6 web bargains that'll save you even more when you book online. Mark my words, this internet thing, it's going to catch on. I'm Tom Bodad, and we'll leave the light on for you at a core hotel. Life on the road can be tough. Different stadiums, people.